All right, commissioners, the live stream is, is running. You are live. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chair Kite, and I would like to welcome you to the August 11th, 2021 Historic Resources Commission meeting. The HRC is a quasi-judicial body that is governed by North Carolina General Statute, the City of Asheville's Unified Development Ordinance, and Buncombe County Ordinance. We are authorized to hear requests for certificates of appropriateness for alterations, demolitions, new construction, and other work within historic districts, or for the alteration and demolition of historic landmarks and other duties, including preliminary review of subdivisions as specified in the ordinances of the HRC. Since we are meeting virtually, please note that members of the public can watch the live stream on the city's YouTube channel and or participate by phone by calling 855-925-2801 and entering code 9384. For those wishing to give public comment during an agenda item, please call in and press star three to enter the caller queue. I will now introduce um, all of our commissioners participating today virtually. And I'd like to give a special introduction to our newest commissioner, uh, Shannon Watkins. This is um, first meeting today for Shannon. So welcome, uh, Shannon. If you wouldn't mind to just turn your mic off uh, on and say a quick hello, and then I will introduce the rest of the commissioners. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm excited to be here. Thanks so much for the appointment. And I look forward to learning a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Welcome. It's good to have you. Um, Commissioner Hornaday. Hello. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Gardner. Hi, everyone. Commissioner Oliva. Hello. Commissioner Falcon. Georgine, you might be muted. Okay, can you can hear me now? There we go. Great. Yes, we can hear you. Great. We can hear you. Uh, Commissioner Vaughn. Here. Commissioner West. Hello. Welcome everyone today. We will uh, next up, we're going to consider uh, the minutes from the July meeting of the HRC. The minutes include findings of fact and conclusions of law. Does anyone have any corrections to note? Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to, to approve the minutes from uh, the uh, July 2021 uh, HRC meeting. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Uh, we will vote by roll call to adopt the minutes. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Abstain. Commissioner West. Hi. Uh, Commissioner Watkins, you weren't here for our last meeting. Yeah, I should probably abstain. Thank you. <laughs> Same for me. I was also not present at our last meeting. I think we have all the eyes that we need. We will um, now begin the evidentiary hearings for the items listed on our agenda. As a quasi-judicial proceeding, the HRD, HRC is not setting policy, nor are we soliciting public opinion on the desirability of an application. The HRC hears and considers evidence presented and applies the standards set forth in the guidelines and standards of the specific historic district for that application. The HRC must make its decision upon competent, material, and substantial evidence to determine the facts of the hearing. The HRC will use judgment and discretion to apply the standards contained in the relevant guidelines to the facts. 
the commissioners in voting for an item will not have a fixed opinion that's not susceptible to change, will not have a conflict of interest, and will not have engaged in ex parte communication regarding the application. Uh, the following are the rules for speaking. This meeting is open to the public, but participation is limited to interested parties who wish to provide comments or testimony, testimony regarding the proposal. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and how they relate to the relevant historic district standards and guidelines, not personal preference or opinion. Witnesses must swear or affirm their testimony. This time, I will administer the oath for all individuals who intend to provide witness testimony, uh, understanding that we may follow up and do this again later in the meeting if we don't have all of our applicants and um, interested parties present for all of the applications at this time. And so we'll do a quick fact finding to see who's here and I'll read the oath and then ask each of you to affirm individually by name. Um, Mark and Jennifer, Cliff, I think you're here. I think I saw you yes. earlier. Yep. Um, let's see, where's my agenda item? How about Robin? Yep, there's Robin, Suzanne, Kevin, Kerr, yes, I see him, and Jay Lurie. Is he attending today? He was on a little earlier, but um he, he's gonna he's gonna step back in before we meet. Okay, so we may circle back around um when he hops back in before we talk about 119 Cumberland. Looks like Alicia Wilson is here. Yes. Um, Shane Elliott is here. Yes. And are we, do we have anybody here for the Elizabeth Place project, Emily? Lexi, Ralph, Colin, it looks like maybe those it looks, not it quite looks like Ralph is here. Okay, so Ralph, there he is. All right, so I will, I'm going to read the, and then I will call each of you that are here by name and understand that we'll circle back and pick up the rest of the folks if they join later in the meeting. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the information you present during the hearing for a certificate of appropriateness or preliminary subdivision approval before the Historic Resources Commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, Mark Cliff? I do. Jennifer Cliff? Thank you. Uh, Robin Gaines? It's Rains. I do. Ray, I'm sorry, Rains. Robin Rains. You're right. Uh, Suzanne Godsey? I do. Kevin Kerr, Alicia Wilson, Shane Elliott, I do. Ralph McDonald, I do. Uh, Alex, I do. And Shannon, I do. Okay. Thank you. We will move to our first public hearing item, which is 240 Pearson Drive in Montford. This is old business um, on the agenda, the first item, and I will turn it over to Alex. Thank you, Chair Kite. Um, let me pull up my presentation screen. So I'm gonna give a, a pretty detailed recap since we've got a couple of new folks with us who weren't here when this slide when this item was last on the agenda um, so some of you will recall this um, application has a couple of different pieces um, there is a little accessory structure on the site that they were proposing to make some modifications to um, they have since submitted some revised plans for that um, so that's the first piece I'll go over. And then there is, sorry if it's loud behind me, my office is near the copier on our floor. So <laughs> um, there, there is also um, 
a section of fencing and some gates that we spent some time talking about last last time around. So we'll um, need to delve back into that a little bit. Um, so as far as the accessory structure changes go, um, I've put together the slides in a way that hopefully is helpful for everyone in terms of um, looking at what's being proposed now versus back in 2018, they were given an approval for, um, <clears throat> for a similar scope of work. Um, it was a little bit different. There weren't quite as many modifications proposed to the accessory structure at that time, um, but just thought it would be helpful um, to bring that up since we did talk about it at the last meeting. Um, so this is the um, south elevation of the structure. It's so it's a it's a um, just north of the primary structure and it's a little bit angled on the lot. But face this is the side of the building that faces the primary structure. Um, so the image here is what it currently looks like. Um, I think probably some of you will recall that there was a shed roof here, which you can see in the um, drawing below. Um, it was. During what the previous review, um, it was somehow determined that that um, had not, um, there was, um, sorry, I forgot to admit someone into the meeting and my cursor's moving around. Um, <clears throat> at that time, um, it wasn't, it seemed clear from the contractors working on the project who've done other historic renovations that that shed roof was not um, historic or original. Um, we since learned that it was, as you can see below on the right hand cor corner, that is the 1917 Sanborn map, which clearly shows the little shed roof over that side of the of the structure. Um, <clears throat> since the last hearing, the applicant has elected to, uh, we can't require that they rebuild it since they were given permission to remove it before, um, but they are proposing to rebuild it. So my first, um, concern I've noted on my staff report is that I think, in my opinion, if they're going to rebuild this um, shed roof, it should be in the same configuration um, as the as it was historically, since we know we can you can see where it was located. Um, I think this, you know, they're what they're trying to accomplish, obviously, is to cover the pedestrian door. Um, but we do have photographs of what it looked like before. And I think it would be more appropriate for it to match the, um, the original appearance if they're going to to rebuild it. The other thing we spent a lot of time talking about um, for this particular elevation were the garage doors on this side. They are proposing to widen them um, to, um, let's see. Ah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I think it, it was 12 feet is where they landed. Um, that was based on the discussion from the last meeting was um, they were a little bit wide, the, the opening was wider than that. Um, based on the discussion from the meeting several years ago, the commission at that point in time said they were not comfortable with a, a, with widening the opening more than um, a couple of feet to two to ten inches max. So that was something that we talked through. Um, I still think this is a character defining elevation in my mind, even though it doesn't um, face the street. I don't think that's necessarily what always makes something a character defining elevation, although that is important in terms of what people see from the street. But I do think this is it clearly reads as the primary elevation um, with the main doors um, <coughs> being on this side with the shed roof covering. So um, so those are the concerns I've noted here. Um, and then, so this is the east elevation. This is the elevation that faces the street. No changes here from the previous submittal. Um, they did get approval back in 2018 to um, replace that barn door with um, with a window. Um, so that that's being that's proposed as being the same in this in the resubmittal. This is the north elevation. Um, <clears throat> They are proposing a dormer on this side to match the opposite side. I think in the meeting last time, I didn't hear any commissioners really take um, an issue from a general standpoint of the dormer. Um, just to go back to this slide, as you can see, there's a little um, a little casement window being proposed on the side of it, which in my opinion looks pretty unusual. I don't think I've ever seen. 
a casement window on the side of a dormer like that. And, um, and I would suggest that that just be um, revised to, to not have the window on that side because um, they will have two new windows within the dormer. Uh, and so there also, as you can see from this elevation and the um, south elevation proposing skylights on both of those um, those portions of roof. Uh, I do have some concerns about the ones that are going to be, um, <clears throat> you can kind of see it, they're hard to see, but the black lines here is what you'll see. Um, <clears throat> the design standards require that the that skylights be um, located on sections of roof that do not face the primary right of way, which I guess one could argue that those don't face the primary right of way. So I'll let I'll let you all discuss that and share your opinions on whether or not you think that's an issue. Uh, the rear elevation, the last iteration showed a Juliet balcony on the second story where the little barn door is and conversion of that into a door with uh, side, uh, side lights to it. They revised it to now show um, just the, the center, the barn door being replaced with a single light window with, um, <clears throat> with windows on either side. Uh, so that is a change from the last iteration as well. As far as the site goes, there haven't been any changes to the proposed um, fencing. So uh, the green, for those of you who haven't been with us for very long, the green along the, um, the front south and uh, west boundaries. Um, the fencing along there was previously approved. It's a four foot tall metal fence. In this proposal, they're asking to where the red, um, where the red X's are, they will, uh, they're requesting to construct two stone pillows, pillows, <laughs> pillars, which were also approved back in 2018, but that they just haven't, were never constructed. So they want to construct those. Um, and this is the cross section of, of the pillar it will be stone to match the foundation material on the house. And then they want to um, install uh, metal gates within the pillars and, uh, and then take carry the fence all the way around, uh, around the north, um, east and west property boundaries. Um, <clears throat> There was a lot of discussion, as you probably some of you remember, in the last meeting about whether or not uh, gates across driveways at the entrance to a property is appropriate to the district. I heard in that meeting a, a lot of opinions that perhaps not. Um, so the applicant did go to um, the trouble of sourcing additional examples to share with you all. If you want to look at them a little bit more up close, they're obviously in your packet. Um, the image on the top left is um, is a um, bed and breakfast on Montford Avenue. Um, <clears throat> below is, this is the Riverside Cemetery. This is an apartment. The bottom right is an apartment building on Cumberland Avenue. And then this is the house uh, in the very sharp bend at the very beginning of Pearson Drive. I don't think that gate is there anymore, but there is still a metal fence there. Um, <clears throat> so I, I still have some concerns about the fencing idea. Um, I, I don't, I, although the precedent photos, I think help support this. Um, I do think that if it, you know, certainly maybe it would be more appropriate for a more prominent um, historic property like this one to perhaps have gates um, but it's still a little bit of a gray area in my opinion just because gates or fencing generally speaking is discouraged in the district and this to me goes a like kind of one step beyond I think just a, a typical fence application so um, <clears throat> I think you all would need to find a very specific reason why it was appropriate to this type of property and perhaps not in others. <clears throat> so that's really everything I had to go over um, as far as this application goes. Um, any questions for me? On slide three, Alex. What? what 
the proposed elevate uh, uh, east elevation is the bottom right or the top right? These are the old ones. I'm sorry, okay. that's confusing. I just put them here just so that you all would know what they mm -hmm. were, what, what was previously approved back then. So they were approved to have that window there. The only difference on this elevation as you, would be the dormer as you see it from this side, the skylights and uh, well, there was a skylight approved on the right hand side back then, and then the dormer and then the little with the little casement window and then um reconstructing the the shed roof other questions for alex okay Mark or Jennifer, is there anything else you'd like to add before we um, follow up with more questions and discussion? Um, yeah, I have a few comments. I think Alex did a good job, but uh, for the new members, um, I want to say thanks for meeting us again today. I'm hoping this meeting is a lot shorter than the last time on this topic. Um, I want to say again that you know we respect and appreciate the efforts of historic preservation. We have a history and a track record with uh, the HRC with our last renovation. Uh, we're very proud of the Griffin Award we won this year for our current house. And you know, we intend to use that same attitude and diligence going forward um, on this carriage house project. Um, I can talk through some of the um, aspects of the elevations if you'd like me to and my, my opinions that may differ with Alex. Uh, would you like me to do that or? He wrote pages. He's been working on it. <laughs> if, if you yeah, think, I think, please. Mark, I think that would be appropriate for the commission and, um, you know, any other reference to the standards that you'd like us to consider as well. Cool. Um, and, and then we can follow up with questions that we might have. Cool. Um, so if we start with the front elevation of the carriage house, which is the east elevation, uh, I know there was some discussion last time about that. Like, you consider this is the front elevation. This is the only elevation that is visible from the street. Um, and it's not even that visible. Uh, in the uh, summertime, the leaves barely visible in the wintertime. Um, I believe, Alex, I sent some pictures of the uh, view from the street, so you can see um, you can see how back it is from the property. Um, from the last proposal, yes, we uh, we reduced the size of the windows on the the dormer. You can't see my fingers. Um, we have now taken the hay door on the top, and we're planning to reuse that on internally. There was some discussion last time that door swings in. We want to save that door mounted on some uh, barn type hardware. And so when it's closed, it can have the same visual look to it uh, and be saved for future use if, if anybody uh, uh, desires that in a long time when we ever move from here. Um, if we go to the south elevation, the garage door one. Um, we have uh, taken the, after the last discussions, we have taken the, uh, our proposed four foot, 14 foot door, um, reduced that down and uh, adjusted the uh, panels to look very similar to the way it looks now. Um, we added the shed roof back over the doors because I don't know where this miscommunication comes came from. You know, we're allowed to remove it. Now there seems to be some regret over that. And I can appreciate that. We're happy to put it back. Uh, we just think it would be architecturally congruous to put it over both the pedestrian and the garage door. Yeah. I think it would look a little bit strange to have the roof going over just half of the pedestrian door, which is how our architect felt as well. Uh, yeah, to put it back the way it was, um, I, I think it would look. It would look incongruous. Incongruous, yeah. Um, we talked about the skylights. We added those because we were losing some light around the, the new dormer we're asking for. Um, 
on the north elevation. Yeah, uh, we are um, we are proposing the new PMR, which is not any different from, than from our May proposal. Uh, we have changed with uh, the inputs from the commission's last meeting, uh, made those windows smaller, and that window matches uh, the dormer on the front side. Um, on the west side, uh, we have now uh, this window we have changed. I'm sorry. Uh, so we adjusted this view by removing the previously proposed French doors and balcony and replaced it with a smaller footprint of windows. Uh, this configuration matches a set of windows that is on our main house on the same elevation and was approved by the HRC in 2018 or 2019. Uh, we've also reduced the size of the windows that are below those grates that seem to be historic and we would like to keep them. Uh, regarding the fence uh, and the gate, we understand that there's been much discussion about gates in the past with the HRC. Uh, when we bought the house in 2018, it was surrounded by a fence and had a had a gate to it. We've done a lot of research. We went to the Pack Memorial Library and found a book by the Asheville Preservation Society that shows a house at Two Pearson Drive with old iron gates. We submitted other pictures of gates that I'm sure are in your package. Um, additionally, there are two other structures, two churches in Montford that have fences and gates. I sent those pictures to you today, Alex. I'm sorry for those being late. It's okay, I can pull them up. Cool. Well, those two gate, those two uh, gate, um, I know these buildings are non-contributing to, uh, to the district, but previously the HRC decided that the fence and gates were not detrimental to the community and they approved them. So to summarize my points on this, gates, both historic and non-historic, our previous gate was a rusty chain link fence, exist in Montford. And the HRC has approved gates in the past. So the question I think for you guys is why gates for our property? And I think though our property shares a lot of features similar to other houses in the neighborhood, it has a few that make it uniquely qualified. One is the mass of the house. It's a big house. Um, and it's, it's just on a big, it's, a, it's prominent from a historic perspective. My wife's giving me good notes. Sorry, that's where Alex's words. I was thinking it's a prominent historic structure. It's a prominent historic structure in the neighborhood. Um, and it also sits on a big lot. It's a, it's a one acre lot of, pro, of uh, parcel. Alex, you probably know how many one acre lots there exist uh, in the district, but I don't think there are, are many. Um, the third issue is that it's on a corner location. Um, this on a corner makes our house more exposed and vulnerable to pedestrian car traffic. We have three kids, a dog, and we have very serious safety and security concerns. Since January, we've had three, sorry, two unsettling incidents at our house that um, have unnerved us a little bit. So for us, we think that these characteristics you know, make the property warranted and justified for approval of these gates and fencing. Um, we have received positive feedback from some neighbors on the work we're proposing. Um, and those are my comments and overall. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any uh, questions for the applicant? Okay, we're going to pause for just a second and open the floor for public comment. Madam Chair, we do not have any callers in the queue. Okay, we will close the floor for public comment. Commissioners, further discussion or questions about the application?
let's go to the um, uh, carriage house. Um, do you want to, is that what we're doing, that one first? Mm -hmm. We can, yeah. Okay. Um, I, um, the uh, standards that want to perform, uh, preserve the roof form on page 35 of the carriage house. I think the added dormer, the north side dormer, doesn't, um, uh, does not follow the ordinance uh, in the standards. Um, so I, I have uh, agree with staff on that, as well as the skylights on the facing the house south side um because that is at least one is visible from the street uh from me driving by um and there's a lot of visibility of the back of the house through if you really want to look but um like uh staff was saying about the the relationship of the uh this side uh, facing the house I, I think the uh, skylights would is a real question for me um, as to why to do that. And I'm more inclined to approve the uh, door size that was originally approved by the HRC um, in 2018. And, um, and I appreciate the addition of the shed roof uh, over that. That's how I'm seeing the uh, standards for this part of it. Can I, can I ask the applicants, uh, how is that going to be used, these, these doors that we're talking about on this elevation in the photo? The, the garage door? Yeah. Um, it's a garage. We're, we're hoping to put a car in it. I mean. Right. So yeah. that, that's my point. It, it's a car. You don't own a carriage. No, no. We have a, we don't, yes, we don't own a carriage. <laughs> work with me here. <laughs> we don't own a carriage. What we're looking at is an adaptive reuse of a carriage house to be used as a garage and an upstairs living space, if I'm understanding this correctly. Are we not? Basically, and the upstairs living space is so dark. By adding the other dormer, we're hoping to move the set of stairs to the back. And it creates, um, I can send the interior drawings, it creates such a better lighting, lit, lit space, which is what we've always gone for with the extra windows. Right. So what you're doing is an adaptive reuse of the property that allows it to be used in modern times while maintaining the substantial architectural integrity of the overall carriage house itself. 100%. Exactly you, what you said. Thank you. I um, I guess I might be in the middle uh, between maybe the two comments <laughs> that we've had so far. I'm probably somewhere in the middle of those. Um, I have less concerns uh, about the size of the carriage doors. Um, I think that certainly it's a, the change that's been made from the previous submittal a few months ago, where we're back to sort of the four panels that are shown in the original door and the width is I think far more um, in better proportion to um, the overall structure than the previous door, which was about four feet, I guess, wider um, than this one. So I think that is certainly nice. I don't have real concerns about the shed roof. I think it is nice to add it back and it certainly um, brings back, in my mind, some integrity to the roof form that was originally in, in the house. I think it's a really um, I guess it's the east elevation, I think has a real strong sort of elegance to it with just a dormer on one side. That's probably the place where I have the most concerns in terms of um, the addition. I can completely appreciate what it does for the inside of the carriage house. And mm -hmm. I think it does maybe the opposite on the outside. <laughs> While it really improves and enhances what is happening on the inside of the, of the carriage house, I can also appreciate that it, for me, it, it, there's a, an elegance to the sort of one-sided dormer and the shed, shed extension of the original roof form that's um, really quite nice. 
Um, and I think we lose a little bit of that by adding that second dormer. Um, I love the idea of using that sort of existing uh, sort of hayloft swinging door as kind of a shutter on the inside of the house. I think it's really um, kind of a neat way to, to give back some integrity to that kind of uniqueness of the carriage house. I think that's great. Um, and I am also sensitive, I think, um, as a commissioner, and I certainly was on the commission in 2018 when we when we looked at this property initially, that having some continuity certainly for all applicants in what was previously considered and approved to what um, in, in terms of how we uh, look at projects that um, submit for sort of a reapplication process. I think that um, it feels important for applicants for there to be some continuity there. And so, I, Alex, I appreciate you pointing out those things that are um, consistent with or things that were proposed back in 2018 for us to consider as a commission. Um, I think my bigger, my biggest concerns are probably the second dormer and then on the west elevation, the sort of triple light, um, the widening of that window from the original sort of proportion that you're keeping on the wet, on the east elevation. Um, I sort of wish that was staying the same size and proportion on the west elevation as well. Um, so I think that's kind of where I'm landing. I'm not, uh, I don't really um, have a strong um, concern about the skylight necessarily. Um, for me, that's one of those places where I think that there's um, minimal impact on the exterior for what we can certainly help the applicant gain on the interior of the property as well. Other commissioners? I'm on the fence about the uh, the added dormer, um, but I I agree with uh, Chair Kite on the proportion of that window. Um, I think my preference would be to keep that as it the proportions it was originally. Uh, and to add to other folks, I don't have any issue with or any concerns um, with the, the addition of the shed roof or the size uh, of the those garage doors. Hi, I, I am kind of in agreement with the with the chair on the on the garage door and also um, on the shed roof I too am not crazy about the dormer or the added windows on either side on the other elevation I like the one window. As a point of clarification, okay. since I'm still fairly new, um, what are we preserving? The idea that it is and would be used as a, a feed loft or the idea that we are preserving the overall integrity of the building? Again, as I use the term adaptive reuse, um, if we're keeping no windows and all that stuff, obviously it keeps it more in line with the intent of using it as a hayloft, which is obviously not going to be used. So what are what do the guidelines allow for for an adaptive reuse to allow it to evolve, maintaining the overall architectural integrity, but it can be used for more current day uses? I, I think just to interject here, what, what we're referencing as far as concerns go are the standards 
that say retain and pre preserve all architectural features that are character defining elements of carriage houses, garages, and other accessory structures, including foundation steps, roof form windows, doors, architectural trim, and lattices, original style and character of carriage houses and other accessory structures, doors, windows, and openings shall be maintained. So it's not just the, the barn door, it's the opening itself, right? So it's the, you know, the opening of the garage doors. That's, that's part of what is character defining about this building. Um, opening meaning the size of the opening, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is why if back in 2018, the commission said, you know, the max they were comfortable with was 10 feet, which I think was, gosh, to go back to that elevation, the previous iteration, it is, it is a fair amount wider than what it was. I think they also, it, the, in this drawing, it doesn't look like it's accurate because they didn't, I don't think they intended to move it all the way over to, to the side, but um, so I'd have to, I'd have to measure it, but I think it was only like two feet wider, maybe. Um, it wasn't very much wider than what, as far as what they approved them than the original opening. I was a little surprised too that they actually approved it back then to be, to be widened. But I think we were, we were obviously in a, you know, since it was Jennifer and Mark, it was, and probably anyone else who had the same request for the same reasons to use it for a contemporary use for a car. <clears throat> But I think a standard parking space is um, in Cherkite, you can say this, is it is the standard width for a parking space, nine feet? Like what would be standard yeah. for a garage or opening? You know, 10 feet, what's that a one car? Um, tightly <laughs> in a garage situation, um, a standard parking spot is nine feet um wide and any you know most parking parking lots but um what can i say something i'm sorry go ahead i'm sorry Wait, one of the reasons why we are trying to make it wider not just because we have three kids that will one day be drivers but when you come into the garage door it's not a straight shot and and you can't tell from this picture but the carriage house does sit quite a bit lower than our house so you kind of go down the driveway and make a kind of a sharp right to get into the door. And we just feel like anything less than what we've proposed is going to get, it's just going to be ugly. I mean, it's going to be ugly in the sense that we're going to hit the wall. So that like we try, we're, 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 we're trying to make it look as much like it was and it's going to be beautiful. I, I'm, I'm, I assure you, um, we're just trying to also make it work for um, our car. So, and, Modern day times. Yeah. I promise it'll be beautiful. So just to, in terms of my interpretation of the drawing, if we're on this south elevation, the left hand side of that carriage door would stay in its current location and you're making it wider towards the right hand corner of the of the carriage house. It, it, it will be centered on the driveway. So I'm not it, but not but you're not what you're not center you're not widening the opening from the center. You're holding one in the left side sort of fixed in its position. That's the way it looks like when it's drawn. If you look at the amount of space yes, between it, the it, right side of the garage door to the corner. I see. Yeah. I yes, it does appear that it is it does appear that it's it's stretched on the right. But honestly I I don't think that we, I think we're just trying to center it on the driveway because the driveway is already there now. And then make it symmetrical with the left side and then symmetrical with the roof. Because it does seem from, from the past, the, the roof was centered on the carriage house, right? But it just, the drive, the carriage door was smaller. So the roof was open. Does that make sense? Yeah. From an engineering uh, architectural sense, I'm pretty sure what you're saying is right that the left hand 
opening of the door is going to stay the same and we're going to move it to the road. Um, You know, the standards are, that Alex read, I think, feel pretty um, without wiggle room in a lot of um, areas that we're talking about. Reform being a strong one for me, um, openings being a strong one. Um, and I think maybe that's where uh, the addition of the skylights doesn't feel like a huge concern. It doesn't overall change the shape and the masking of the roof but still offers an opportunity for um, adapting that upper floor for new use um, where we, where I, I feel the most disconnected from the standards with regards to what's proposed is in the addition of that second dormer and in the pretty strong modifications of that upper sort of hayloft window on the West elevation. Um, those feel, pretty incongruous with the standard that seems pretty clear with regards to what's to be protected in terms of the, um, the architectural characteristics of the existing um, building um, um, for me. Can I say one more thing about the windows on the west elevation is we had proposed um, with our architects to try and make that a much larger space because you cannot see it from either front you cannot see it anywhere we were trying to maximize the light and then that seemed to not go well so we took your um, input into consideration and we i'm looking right now at our kitchen window that was is a new window on the same elevation in the back of our house that was approved so we there's not a lot of things that match on the back of this house but we did get excited about the opportunity to have something match um, from the carriage house to the main house. And that's kind of how we came up with this one because I believe we're using the same footprint, the same window and just adding on the side with the idea that that has already been approved on the main house and elevation. the same elevation. I can appreciate the rear elevation um we certainly have quite a bit of precedent where we've treated the rear elevation with some um, more latitude than we would in other elevations on the house and that was probably the same conversation we had in 2018 with regards to that window on that same side of the main house the window that was that we've replaced was not functional. It was a, it was a wide and skinny window that was towards the top of the wall. And so without, if, if we would not have been able to change that, it would have really, it, it, it would have, it, it would have changed our whole design. Which is similar. We're, and we're just trying to get light in. That's all. We're trying to figure out the best way to get the most light upstairs and keep it and keep it, in, you know, keep the integrity, which is however we can get light in is, is our goal. Yeah, I, I understand that as well. And um, I, but we're tasked with just following the standards of the uh, that are set by the uh, by the neighborhood and the uh, in the city in the county. And it's pretty specific about um, about the openings um changing them too much and to be as flexible as we can to get you know um some uh maybe on that uh east no no south elevation um a door that you don't have to bend over to get through and um wasn't that the issue with that or was it not uh, or is it the same height I think it's the same height right now. Okay. Um, no, I was thinking it's, it's the same height. Okay. Um, but but changing the roof form is a is a big leap, uh, and I'm a little stuck on the uh, uh, the uh, 
skylights on this elevation um, okay. where I could, um, um, uh, where it's not uh, directly um, relating to the main house and on the back side would be um, where you all have them as well as more appropriate. Um, but that's where I, um, that's where we are. Is it, 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 just following the standards as close as we can, so that when the next person comes and says, "We'd like to have a larger window." Of course, and and we we were under the impression after the last meeting that dormer seemed to not be an issue because it was going to match the front dormer, and many people were positive about that. So we kept that the same and tried to change just so we could still get light over there and have a staircase that makes the property much more functional um, in the back and light. So that that's where we're coming from with that dormer. Do people have comments about the fencing? Well, before we move on, uh, do we uh, have some guidance we can give them about where we would allow opportunities for them to bring in light up upstairs that would meet the guidelines, rather than have them proposing something where, like they did, they're saying the dormer, which they seem to get the impression we were okay with, and now we're saying not. Is there some more concrete guidance we can give them that where we would accept uh, opportunities for them to bring in more light? I don't think we have to find a solution um, for everything here. I think um, it's, I think what we're saying is that it's tricky, but having a carriage house isn't a, a burden. Um, I think there's, there's plenty of ways to make this work, whether it's interior light, it may not be natural light. Uh, it's pretty, uh, there's, it's a very tree lot, you know, as well. And, um, so I think um, Alex has maybe pointed them as well to some things that are going to be problematic, and um, I think we can. That's uh, I don't know, Chair Kite. I'm maybe off off on that. I mean, I think that um, certainly I want the applicant to uh, leave the meeting with a sense of where accommodations can be made that makes the commission um you know more supportive of what they're of the proposed solutions um i think that um you know hearing from commissioners regarding the dormer is important for them to gauge where things may fall um in a in a vote type situation uh, for me, I think I'm changing my mind on the west elevation windows. I think that there's a strong um, there's a strong uh, consistency with other things that this commission has done and considered on rear elevations of properties that are uh, in terms of um, more flexibility to make more drastic modifications. For me, that's um, shifting my mindset there. Um, the, the dormer is a struggle for me. I think in 2018, that elevation, there was proposed just more skylights on that side that would maybe help with the light situation. Do you have a, um, a clearance problem with your stair in that location without the dormer there? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. The, the, Yes. Yeah, the head, you don't get the right head height there to get your stair up in that spot. Where is the <laughs> stair right now, or isn't there really one? Uh, it's it's very primitive. It's it's behind, it's kind of in between the two doors. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's kind of wrapped around, it takes up a lot of space, and it's not, it's not well positioned. So by moving the stairs to the back of the carriage house, um, we really gain maximum use of the left side and the right side. And then in the uh, 
the potentially mother-in-law suite that's going to be upstairs. You want to talk about fences and come back to this? I want to make sure that we that we're giving that we've got enough feedback. Um, certainly, Mark and Jennifer, if there's questions that you need to ask of us as well, so that there's um, I know this you you've been in front of the commission more than once, um, and I'm so okay sure with the fence only because it was already approved and I don't want to, it, it's already going around. I would hesitate to approve a new fence like this. I think the original fence was because it was a girl's home and it was also outside the district. Uh, I think that's true, isn't it, Alex? And this was brought into the district after its inception. I don't have any record of that, but it's possible. But I mean, there were a lot of places where there were random fences, like this one had a chain link fence chain and that link. wasn't completely yeah. uncommon. Yeah, so I'm fine with the uh, uh, um, letting them complete their uh, fence around, but it's the overall in the guidelines or the standards uh, sector, it's this, no, no, it was somewhere else. Um, that the overall uh, fences were not intrinsic elements to Montford. And as with this property, it didn't come in to Montford with a fence. And um, it does have one now, so I'm fine with them completing it. I don't want, uh, I, uh, it's not specific in the guidelines anywhere I could find about gates and a lot of the commercial properties you were showing with gates, um, some of them are uh, raw, uh, uh, cast iron and old and original. And, and there are some uh, commercial uh, ones with uh, gates, but I'm leaning to, uh, I'm saying, I'm, I'm not feeling that, a, that having a fenced and gated houses in Monford is something that I'd like to, I, I don't think that, uh, the standards say uh, encourage that, and so I'm um, willing to um, allow the fence to contribute around, finish around, and um, but without a, a, a an electronic gate, automatic gate. I just want to clarify and remind those that the two examples that you submitted today, Mark, those were examples that I mentioned. I believe during the last meeting, if not, I emailed you about them. Those are so like the Greek Orthodox Church fence in the minutes in the file was very specific that the commission like had a whole lot of hesitancy about approving that, approving that. But the only reason they really eventually allowed it was because it's um, because it's not a contributing structure. It is on the edge of the district. And they felt like the fence actually further delineated between what was the historic character of the district and what was clearly with outside of it. And then the one that's at the the church that um, has the entrance on um, off of Cortland, um, there was a huge stack of letters in there about, you know, I don't know, like I remember Montford from the 90s. There was a lot of safety issues um, in many of our neighborhoods in Asheville back then. Um, it was not the same as it is now. Um, There's a fair amount of, um, crime and other safety issues. And that was like, that was part of the reason why that one was approved. My other thought on that one is that it is kind of more interior to that site. You know, it's not right out on the street, but on the flip side of that, I have, I think I've like where Will is, it's like we, the commissioner already approved the fencing around the whole rest of the perimeter of the property. So is the gate or the gates really going to be that, you know, that noticeable, um, but I do agree that this situation should kind of be determined as to be unique. It was back then, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of discussion around the fence, generally speaking. So this is where we are now. And I don't necessarily have a concern about continuing it around. <laughs> I um, also 
don't have a real concern, obviously, about continuing the fence around the property. And as for the gate, I um, I think there's an there's obviously it's not clear, which is why we have to spend so much time talking about it. Um, it feels like um, that's part of why you know you can always tell the things that are going to take a long time to talk about. Um, but for me, it doesn't feel sort of out of character or incongruous with the presence of the house on that particular piece of property. Um, there's a presence to that location. There's a presence to that house. There's a presence to the, the expanse of the site um, that doesn't feel incongruous to me um, in terms of having the gates there. And I think that there's certainly um, plenty of strength in the house that, um, that sort of makes the gate for me feel like um, it's not um, it's not a like a distraction from the integrity of the house or the site. It feels to me to sort of fit a little bit with that house and that spot um, in ways that plenty of examples of in Montford of more modest sizes of houses or more modest lot sizes would feel um, really out of character and incongruous with the, you know, entire sort of street frontage of an, of an area of the, of the district, um, you know, in a way that this one feels different to me for a lot of reasons uh, in terms of, you know, comparison to other properties. You know, and some of the larger bed and breakfast properties, I think the Black Walnut was one of the ones that was an example that was used, certainly has that same sort of presence in the neighborhood um, on, a, you know, the same kind of prominence and presence within the context of the neighborhood. And it doesn't feel to me particularly incongruous or out of place in that location either. Um, it's hard for me to draw a connection with some of the more commercial properties or the churches or things that, to other houses, but, you know, the Black Walnut certainly hasn't always been a bed and breakfast um, and carry the same sort of weight in the district as a house like this one does. Um, and that was an original gate at the Black Walnut, most likely. Or at least it reads great. that way. It sure, it, yes, I would agree with you. Alex, what is the gate? I looked through exhibit D and I can't tell what the gate is. It's just gonna match the existing fencing. So that's a flat straight fence mm -hmm. gate? Is that, that's correct, right, Jennifer and Mark? Okay. Yeah. I, I, so I don't see that. So not one where that has the sort of swoopy top to it? Just, the, it would be just be straight across. The gate is up for, I mean, the, the idea. Functionally, it works better because of the slope of the driveway to be a, a straight gate. Yeah. But that, I mean, we, we can figure out the best gate that it that matches the house, that works with the property. I think originally, Alex, had um, approved it and that it was just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's help me here. She approved it, like it's just a continuation. Yeah, as, as Alex was saying, like if, if you look at the gate as being just a continuation of the fence, then that's the way we were trying to make it look, just a continuation of the fence. Won't be, it won't be closed, most of the time it's going to be open, so it would, when it's closed, it just looks like it's a continuation of the fence. So it was kind of from that input where we went. As you can see, we're trying to take the inputs from the HRC and work with them uh, and you know, to do the best we can to make it functional and, and go forward. So I, I hope you guys take that into account. Mm -hmm. I Doing the best we can. And um, when we went through this in 2018, 
Um, as you guys know that we have a pool and there was no precedent for precedent and for a pool and then since um, there was no precedent, I think now there is, you know, it has to be only in the backyard, not visible from the street. So sure, we have a pool now there. I assume now there is some sort of, you know, it has to meet certain criteria. And we feel like with this house being you know, a large, as large of a house it is, as it is, as large of a lot it is, as it is, <clears throat> you know, maybe moving forward, because I understand that you don't want to say yes to other people, you know, gates moving forward, but because of the size of the house, because of the size of the lot, um, it's not incongruous with, with the property. And we have had lots of positive feedback from our neighbors. We're, you know, previous board members that have written letters and um, have been positive. I, I did mean, mean to mention that when I was giving my staff report, I did hear from um, from a neighbor and uh, supporting the project. And I, I heard from Rob Mooney too, but he doesn't live near you guys, does he? He's in the district. Yeah. He's in the district. Yeah. So. And he Two people emailed to voice support, and then the neighbor immediately to the north emailed to voice concerns about the changes, um, in particular to the accessory structure, and then some concerns about impacts to trees along the north po property boundary um, related to the fence. But I talked to Jennifer and Mark before the meeting, and they were planning to have an arborist out to help them try to figure out exactly how to best care for the trees on that side so that there's no impact to trees. And those same neighbors are very supportive of a game. Alex, um, just to kind of clarify something, there's a planting schedule in front of the uh, current fence that's to be done, right? To minimize its view of it. That was required and it, they just haven't gone forward with planting yet. We, okay. it stays yeah. with such a, a um, so when that gets done, it's, you're not going to see, uh, it's going to minimize the existing fence. And, um, and that's where I feel a straight, uh, um, aluminum, uh, gate it's going to stand out because that's not going to be covered. It's not in an ornate gate like these uh, four of these uh, five examples shown. It's going to stand out as a as an anomaly and as as, as it, I feel like if we allow the planting to hide uh, the reason a, a fence was allowed in 2018. Um, that a gate adds a little bit more of a, a it's not a unique uh, architectural uh, uh, element that matches the tone of the house, um, similar to the corner of Montford down the hill, um, where it kind of really stands out a lot. Um, the plantings haven't really hidden that. Is that making, um, so the, I feel that the plantings are uh, in your benefit for the fencing, uh, the, uh, yeah, the fencing, but it kind of works against my five year from now view of the house when you have a gate that looks like um, one of the previous examples you said today um, in front of your entrance, the uh, automatic armature pulling it open versus what you see here at the... Uh, uh, if I can clarify the gate, that, if I can clarify the gate that we're proposing is a sliding gate, so it will does not swing. It does not swing. It will disappear behind the other fence and behind any other plantings that would be behind the fence. So basically, it would slide. If you have one fence here, it would slide in behind it. You have an opening, and it would be that part would be hidden. So you wouldn't have this just one big door sitting there. That is not what we're looking for. Does that make, does that make sense? 
I also think there's an expected will to kind of pick up on what you're talking about, but maybe looking at it from a different perspective. There's a natural rhythm that we expect at a driveway where there's this sort of void, right? If there was no fence and there was planting along or a low um, stone wall like we can see throughout Montfort, there's a cadence to that that includes a sort of void and this sort of stop and start at people's driveways. Uh, so for me, the fence feels uh, when you think about it five years from now, when the plantings are all in place and we've got this sort of screen, there's still this sort of um, sort of missing tooth at the driveway where you would naturally see it anyways. Um, and I think especially the, the fence that's already in is that sort of dark, the, you know, the dark kind of wrought iron looking fences always kind of almost a little bit disappear visually for me. Um, as opposed to, you know, a bright, shiny aluminum fence or a chain link fence or something like that. And so for me, I guess I don't, I think you still get that rhythm um, because the plantings are missing. I especially like it being a sliding gate versus sort of a swinging gate. And, um, and um, you know, I think we there's certainly precedent to that rhythm all over Montford where planting stop and started driveways and, and the, the low walls that we see on some of the streets at the front sort of stop and start um, at driveways or at the steps that come off the sidewalk up to the front door. Um, you know, that sort of rhythm, I think, is, is still consistent in my mind as you sort of walk down the street or drive down the street um, there even with the gate. In this case, in this lot, in this location, um, that I wouldn't necessarily put everywhere in Montford either. The same as the swimming pool conversation that we had in 2018. Um, you know, that was certainly, we spent a good bit of time talking about that one also. Um, because it was, you know, precedent setting in many ways. Other feedback from other folks on the fence? Everyone's so quiet today. It would be great if some other people could weigh in so we can kind of get through the to where you guys are comfortable making a decision. <laughs> I agree with Chair Kite. I agree with um, the gate from last time y'all were here. So I think that I'm okay with the gate for sure. Ditto. I'm okay with the gate. I'm okay with the gate. I'm okay with the gate as well. Me too. <laughs> Okay, do we need to back up to the carriage house a little bit? Mark and Jennifer, certainly our goal is to make sure you have it and any kind of feedback that allows you to, to move forward in some way. Um, this is the stage, I think, where we talk about um, changes or modifications that you might want to make to your application based on feedback um, or um, giving yourself an opportunity to think on it and, and, um, and follow up much like you did after the last meeting a few months ago. Um, and I want to make sure that you um, have as much clarity as the commission can offer you with regards to where we think we're at with the carriage house. It sounds like the fence and the gate is something that could move forward today. Um, pretty in a pretty straightforward way. We got a lot of consensus from the commission that that was, um, that that was uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah, I appreciate moving forward on the gate. It's, 
I'm sure you guys have been with this, through this in the last year. It's it's very hard for us to get a, a feeling for how the whole commission feels. You know, there's two or three or four people who, who voice large opinions, and I don't, you know, I can't see all of you, and I don't have that feeling as to, is this how everybody feels? Yeah, I, I do much better in person than I'm sure all you do as well. Um, but it, it's, it's really hard to get a feeling. I mean, I've got, you know, like anything, there's people who have a big negative opinion talk, and people have a really positive opinion talk, and then everybody else, I, like, I don't have that feeling. Like, is this, does the whole commission feel that our carriage house proposal is appropriate, or is that just a few? Because that question makes sense. I can appreciate the question. Um, and, you know, I think that's where other folks having some, you know, contributing to the conversation would help you um, better make some decision. There's a couple of us that have expressed how we think, what we think is successful about the carriage house, and also parts of it that aren't quite as successful for some of us, but, um, we don't always all vote the same way. <laughs> so, <laughs> and recognizing that you don't, you know, it's hard to go into a voting situation where we don't really know what the outcome is going to be. Um, and I wouldn't say I have a clear sense of what the outcome would be myself either um, in order to help guide you. So it'd be helpful to get some additional feedback. Uh, I've already um, sort of, I think, expressed some of my feedback on the dormer. Um, but Chair Kite, you had mentioned before that without the addition of the dormer, it just makes it a challenge um, for the, I guess, just the clearance from those stairs. Um, is that due to the stairs being relocated or um, that wasn't quite clear to me? My understanding, I think I can answer that, that the, they're proposing to relocate the stair uh, to the back, to that back elevation, sort of underneath where the new dormer would be. And that in that spot, folks are going to bump their head on the way up on the existing roof framing without the dormer there. And the, the goal for moving the stair is to make the, in, the it take up space in the right place to get the inside spaces to work out correctly. I think I maybe am interpreting what you're trying to do um, there that it's sort of in the middle of the state of the carriage house right now, kind of in the way of making the, the best use of the upstairs um, and maybe even the downstairs, but that you bump your head on the roof framing without the dormer there. I think you said that very well. Okay, gotcha, thank you. I'm just taking a look at the floor plan. I actually didn't um, mind the dormer at first. I definitely um, learned a lot listening to my fellow commissioners about um, the addition of the dormer. I had kind of a question maybe for the rest of the commission. Um, so I recognize that it says, you know, preserving and retaining structures, but does that mean like not duplicating or are we taught like does that more specifically mean like don't mess with the first one for me it is i interpret it in a way that the sort of massing of the overall roof form is um the integrity of that is protected i also could find myself as the more I talk and the more we study this, that I could find myself in a similar, um, in a similar place with the back dormer as I am on the west elevation windows, <laughs> where it is not a prominent elevation that's highly visible, um, is 
uh, it certainly for me substantially changes the overall massing of the roof, which is where I think my initial response to the dormer is. Um, and I, I think especially because the prominent street elevation in those times of year where it's visible or as you're driving down the driveway and approaching the property is you see that side elevation. I think if you, if you were to con in, approach the building on the south elevation sort of facing as you come through the driveway and that was the prominent kind of street facing elevation, it might be different because you don't get that glimpse of the sort of one-sided dormer and that strong sort of gable end view that you get on the east side as you're sort of looking at it from the road kind of down the driveway. Um, so I think that's the orientation of it is kind of impacting my feelings around the, how strong that elevation is without that second dormer on it. And that elevation being what's, you know, certainly um, highly visible or not as you drive by it. And because it's so far back in the property is still sort of a main approach facade of the, of the building um, next to the carriage door side that faces the main house. Um, so that's the part that I, um, I think I struggle with a little bit. It's the, and I, I certainly can appreciate the, the value of having it with regards to how the stair is going to work and the, um, you know, enhancement that it makes to the inside. Um, and if we could pick the whole thing up and turn it face on with the carriage doors facing the street, it'd be perfect. <laughs> we could solve all the problems, but that is, uh, that is not a thing that I think is going to be able to happen. Uh, on this that one, probably wouldn't allow me to do that anyway. No, we probably run a muck of other standards that say don't do that. So um, <laughs> that's the challenge, I think, is that you just get that the strength of that kind of gable end view with the one dormer and that sort of elongated kind of shed roof over the over the doors on the south elevation that is just really nice and um, and pretty strong and clear. And then it, it really just changes it a lot for it to be a sort of symmetrical dormer kind of a configuration, even though when you look at it on the sort of face on the north elevation, that's not a highly visible side of the, of the house. And if it were just that consideration, in my view, it would probably be different. A quick clarifying question. Are we in agreement that we're allowing them to add the new, uh, replace the shed roof and extend it all the way over the door or not? I don't know if we've reached agreement on that or clarity for the applicants. Um, I haven't heard any real strong objection to the widening of that to to hit from the sort of ends of both of those doors. Um, other folks can weigh in if I've misread the comments that have been made. I think as much of the, uh, guidelines for carriage house number two um, in the standards about um, keeping the uh, architectural um, elements that you know are there where they were um, speaks to that. And I know it, it does create a little jank there, but that's, um, that's, that's not in our purview. Um, so I, think that if we're if they're putting back a form that was originally there it should be where it originally was to the standards uh is what i is how i read the standards um for, right, for that if something was completely missing replace it either reconstruction based on accurate documentation or a new design compatible with that sort of character of the main building um, right down. or we can just not replace it because we have permission to remove it we were just doing this to, because in our last meeting, Mr. Hornaday, we were very adamant how that was an original piece and it needed to be you know, and we're trying to do the same. You. I'm, I'm trying to understand you. You're breaking up because you're both talking. Sorry. We were trying to work with what you said at the last meeting. You were that you were right that, that came down. So we said we'll put it back up. But since we had permission to take it down, we don't need to put it back up, correct? It'd be better to do that. 
but just not to have the shed roof anymore because it's not there. No, we had the approval to remove it, so we just don't put it back. I'm just looking at what you're submitting, and I'm I'm, I'm telling you that the the standards are that say to um, try and put um, if you know where it was. Uh, uh, um, it's number seven. I know. Um, just so that you know, and and go through, and it helps if you when um, you're bringing up things. It's not about an emotion or what I like or don't like. I'm just trying to interpret the standards so that um so that it's fair so that it's fair uh, across the board um for whoever understood. comes in understood and understood we just when we talked about putting it back on you know we tried to make it match with a wider door which probably what it would have looked like back then if it had the wider door but if we have to put it on exactly the way it was we probably just won't do it because it'll look It'll look strange. That's, that's your decision to make, sure. Okay, um, so that, yeah, that, that's what we're saying. But I'm not, I'm not, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. To weigh in, I support the shed roof as submitted by the applicant, and I hope others will weigh in so we get some sense for them on whether they will leave it off or put it back on, but in a slightly modified format that meets the, you know, the needs of everyone. Thank you. Uh, in an effort to help sort of focus the conversation, it sounds like um, I'm not hearing a lot of additional comments about the size of the door, the carriage doors. That's been part of the conversation. Certainly the configuration of the shed roof overhang, uh, the dormer, and then the windows on the west elevation are really the significant, the substantial changes from the 2018 application um, that have come up in conversation. Um, you know, if there's folks that can kind of walk themselves through that list and decide if there's any, um, what concerns they have with regards to those items. Um, my personal check off of those lists, the, the, the biggest concern for me is the dormer. Given the placement of the west, you know, the orientation of the west elevation windows, um, and the sort of front with the carriage door um, as a garage door and the shed overhang. Um, I think the highest priority concern for me is the dormer. The skylights on this elevation, is there any um, discussion on that? Skylights were approved last time. I don't know entirely all of them, but uh, I would support those as submitted. I don't, I don't have a strong concern about the skylights really on any of them elevations. I agree. I don't have any problem with the skylights. I agree, no problem. I'm fine with the skylights too. I also have no problem with the skylights. I'm fine with the skylights as well. That feels like progress. <laughs> next up, carriage door. <laughs> let's, try, let's try for the next thing. <laughs> See if we get any progress for that. I'm super okay. new to the committee, um, but I am sort of in favor of letting them have a wide enough door so that they can use it as a garage because I don't think they're not asking for like a double garage door here or anything that extreme. I 
I also agree. I don't mind um, opening the carriage door a little bit more just so that they can use it more. And I do think that if that is going to be allowed, then um, as much as I would love to have this, the overhang stay where it originally was, if we're going to allow the carriage door to open, I feel like it should at least follow that, um, that expansion. I agree with Sarah about the expansion too. I agree. I'm okay with the expansion and also to make sure that the shed roof looks right and matches that. I agree with both also. I am uh, very reluctantly okay with um, both of those. That also feels like progress. Um, how about the west elevation where the, we've taken the Juliet balcony away? And there we go. Thank you, Alex. I would, uh, I would prefer t to keep this um as a single window um i was pretty adamantly against the juliet balcony last time and that was sort of my hot button and so i'm i'm happy to see um see that revised and appreciate that for sure um but i uh and my preference would be to leave it as it is today to be quite honest but i understand wanting to have um additional light in that space um on that side and um, and also appreciate uh, repurposing that door somewhere else in the, the space. Um, uh, so I, 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 you know, I'm more inclined to um, to really sort of this is a little bit of a sticking point with me to to keep this as a single single window. I say ditto to what Stephanie just said. but the lower windows are fine? Uh, I would, I mean, I think if that, especially if that's garage space right there is my understanding is, you know, if, if they were left the way they were, that would, that would be my preference. Um, I'm trying to be uh, not too uptight, I guess, um, or just to give, I'm just trying to be flexible, I think, and not say no to, to too much stuff. Um, but I, I would be, yeah, I would be okay with the addition to those um, those little windows beneath the, the vents. For the applicants, are those windows into the garage or are they into a living space? Uh, it's a combination uh, living space uh, where the bathroom is going to be. Bathroom and gardening. Yeah, gardening space, essentially. Did you get that? Yeah, I, I, I did. I, I'm, uh, I'm, this is one where I'll struggle a little bit because I'm trying to find where it, it makes sense, but you know, extra natural life for a gardening space for a bathroom, harder for me to to go with you there if I'm trying to find places to accommodate and say, yeah, let's stick to as much of the you know integrity of the space as possible. So this might be one where we'll uh, disagree a little bit, but uh, I'm open to you know some thoughts on that. I'm sorry, we feel strongly about keeping the original grades because I think that's really neat. To think about. Um, we just wanted to try and uh, it's accommodate both. It's really in a, I mean, the, the roof is covered in moss, is really dark and moldy, and I just feel like natural light, anywhere we can find it would be really helpful. And there's a glass door to that room, right? 
I'm sorry. A divided sorry. glass door to that room. Oh, the front door. Um, well, it depends. Depends on where the stairs go. <laughs> That's what you've submitted, right? Yes. Yeah, we're the, yeah. we're the dormers out when we, uh, we submitted that. That changes, we might have to change something. Yeah. The dormer affects the whole inside. I was looking for a photo. Okay, the photo's there of what it looks like now. So it's just the metal grates, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And again, you can't see it from the street or really from anywhere except our, actually, I can't see from our neighbor's house because of the trees. Yeah, I just want to chime in and say, you know, I'm not sure that the way it's designed is entirely cohesive with the rest of the structure, but I can appreciate that it's on the back of the building and the commission mm -hmm. has made, has allowed for plenty of changes to be made on rear elevations. I mean, that's just, that's obviously where people see, see the building least. And so I think in my opinion, if you're going to allow changes, the rear elevation is the easiest place to say yes but i don't know that like i wonder if jennifer and mark if the the way that you're showing the the windows below the it may just be a product of the drawing but like if mm -hmm. they were um a little more like narrower and kind of just you know bumped up like clearly because i think it's just because they're they're black boxes and it okay. it's like there's no bottom frame it just kind of looks a little bit funky in the right yeah. Um, so I wonder if they were like, if the intent is to just make them like kind of the same size as, as the venting, then that might be a little less like distracting from the venting open or the vent openings. I'm not sure. And then as far as the second story where the barn door is, I, I understand what you were saying earlier about the six over one on the rear of the main structure and that the main house if i recall correctly had a lot of different window styles which yeah. is very we common for montford um so i wondered if like if the commission was okay with leaving the opening as is and adding um just the you know two over one like you did on the other side if that is would be mm. acceptable to the commission i mean that's what the that's what the commission approved before they just that you guys just didn't include the windows on either side last time around um mm -hmm. but it seems like just generally speaking having the window mm -hmm. style be consistent with the other windows mm -hmm. of that kind on the building might help we did have two sets of french doors approved on the back of the main house which is also why we went for french doors the first time so we've always we're always trying to stay with things that you guys feel comfortable with. So that's again that's that was our motivation. Sure, I understand. It was approved once. Hopefully, get approved again. But <laughs> Very good. There's, we, all, there's always another guideline. I do think the light. Um, rhythm, the rhythm of the lights, the two over one, um, feels better in that location. There's certainly plenty of language in the standards about rear elevations and, um, you know, and recommendations in the, in the standards about, you know, that's where we put additions. We've, there's lots and lots of examples, um, that this commission and previous commissions have approved more significant changes on rear elevations. And I think that there's also language uh, and certainly conversations we've had around um, the sort of, um, there's a hierarchy on the site with the main primary structure and an accessory structure that I think warrants the conversation around the sort of um, the rhythm of the, the lights and the windows going from, uh, you know, the main house has got a lot more detail to them in the windows and then that, you know, having a two over one windows on the accessory structure feels 
hierarchically sort of in better consistency with in the relationship of the accessory structure to the main house probably. And that's to say that I think I'm comfortable with the window changes proposed on the West elevation with some consideration to the light pattern um, and it being sort of diminutive in comparison to the, um, the detailing on the main house. Um, in that particular case, I think that's where um, certainly opportunities for a lot more daylighting into the structure feel pretty easy to justify for me in alignment with the standards um, for the district. Um, Hi, I'm I, agree. I agree with you, uh, Chair Kite, that this is the back facing to allow more light in the house if that other more more of what was approved in 2018 but now that more attention is focused on this to allow more light uh that the that the um, applicant is looking for and and what might be lost from that additional uh north side uh uh dormer um and go back to what was more closely approved in 2018 with the bank of skylights on the uh, north side. And if if the other commissioners all are fine with the skylights on the front, um, I think, um, and uh, the east elevation, I was fine. Uh, it looks great uh, as shown. Um, so it's pretty much a, and I, and tell me if I'm off on this, the, the 2018 approved with some, if they want to do the shed roof a little bit larger of a door on the front, um, a, a garage door. And, um, but what I'm, I'm leaning to one dormer because there's a lot of visibility of that. It, uh, from the street to see uh, that north side. I'm uh, convinced now by Chair Kite on the west elevation. I'm happy with it uh, as proposed by the applicants and if that is, seems to be the consensus of the other commissioners. It seems to me that we are that the commission seems good with the east, south, and west elevations. It's just the dormer on the north side that is uh, is a sticky point. Is 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 that correct? That's the that's the my general feeling on what we've heard. Okay. Does anybody? Approve the dormer. <laughs> Anyone? Dormer. Anyone? No. I'll, I'll throw myself on that uh, that fire heat <laughs> there. But I don't think the votes. Uh, so, uh, there goes that dream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if we remove the dormer, this should be approved for a CA. I'm not really sure how that would work. Alex? Yeah, so you can, um, if you feel, uh, con you know, feel good about the feedback that you've gotten and have some clarity around uh, the modifications that you think the commission would like you to make, um, you can make those changes today unless anybody in the commission feels like we need to see any kind of updated drawings to reconsider or Alex, if you think that you um, need to see anything. Um, I think we're really talking about removal of, a, of the dormer on the north elevation is really the big modification that I think is on the table. Yeah, that, um, and I just wanna make sure that you all are clear with the drawing from whoever made these drawings for you, that they're 100% right in terms of the opening. Like Chair Kite was asking you about, is it just widening to the right, which is that's what it looks like from the drawing. And if we just, we need the drawing to be exactly right. 
Um, and then the other thing I want to ask is if the dormer is not going to be um, included in the approval, do you want to, hold on, do you want to um, revert back to this set of four skylights that were approved on that side? Would that help you? I mean, I know that doesn't help you with the stair, but just from the light perspective. Yes, if we can have the dormer and we have to maximize the light over there too. I don't even know how it's like maybe we'll make a ladder. We'll figure something out. All right. Yes, probably we would like to have more skylights. Yes, the skylights. Okay. Then I I mean obviously I'm totally fine reviewing that at staff. We have the drawing right here. So it's okay if that's what they want to do and just eliminate that from the CA request, the dormer from the CA request today. And then sounds like we're, we can move forward with everything else, right? Mm -hmm. No, that's the dormer. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. And well, then just um, I think just confirmation from you regarding the direction you'd like to take with the shed uh extension on the front if you're going to remove it or keep it the way you've proposed if if you're okay with the way it's proposed we'd like to to add it back because we'd like to do the right thing if it's not the way it's proposed we'll just remove it yes yeah i mean i think we heard pretty uh a lot of commissioners chiming in that it was they were comfortable with how it's proposed Okay. So we'll leave that. Okay. All right. So I, it's been a minute since we've amended something. So um, I think you guys just need to state what your amendment is, the changes that you'd like to make, and then we can craft our motion around that. Okay. Well, I, I take it. I need to say that we'd like to submit our proposal with the one change of removing the dormer on the, the north side adding some skylights uh, in place of that dormer i believe those were all the changes that yes. were and these are acceptable so is that good enough for me to say yeah and i think the conditions would be that you just would follow up with revised elevations to be reviewed at staff level um and maybe some more um detail on exactly what the gate's going to look like i think that might be something else that we might want as a condition alex um for you to just have a record of what the proposed gate will be okay. we've got the fencing specifications but do you want something beyond that well, I think there was the question came up about whether the gate, what the gate was going to look like itself, whether it had this sort of swoopy top or this, and it was just to clarify. I don't know. Maybe commissioners don't think that is necessary. I mean, if it's, it, it if, I guess it's in there. There's one that says straight top gate. Yeah, that's maybe fine. With and it's up to you here. guys. I don't know what else they would. I mean, I, I don't know. I I didn't take issue with the actual like decorativeness of the gate. I just, you know, was. Right. But uh, if you all think it should be something more elaborate, then I I think it just call, would call more attention to itself. But yeah, no, I think we were in consensus about it being just a straight top gate. And I guess I didn't scroll far far enough in the in the submittal to see those options for gates down below at the bottom. Yeah, so I think, I think there are two like buried in the, the original submittal yeah. too, so. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Well, I'd like to make a motion. Is that okay. there? I think so. Madam Chair, based on the evidence presented to this commission, including Exhibit A, application and product descript uh, project description, uh, exhibit B, site plan. Exhibit C, photographs of subject property, 14 pages. Exhibit D, fence specifications, um, two pages. Exhibit E, column section drawing. Exhibit F, carriage house drawings and renderings, seven pages. Exhibit G, 
revised drawings and plans, 17 pages, received July 20th, 2021. Exhibit H, 1917 Sanborn map, insurance map. Um, exhibit I, fence example photographs, two pages, received uh, August 11th, 2021. And the commission's when, action, was there a J? When, I think there was one more photograph, Alex, didn't you share? Um, that was everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the commission's actual inspection to review of the subject property by all members except I move that this commission approve the certificate of appropriateness based on the following that the application one that the application is to one modify existing existing uh, accessory structure widen existing eight foot wide opening on the south elevation to twelve wide and install a new painted wood garage doors, install new Marvin custom six light uh, wood door and reconstruct shed roof overhanging on the south elevation. Replace existing wood door on the second story of the east elevation with new Marvin ultimate SDL two over two double hung wood window matching existing windows. Replace existing wood door on the west elevation with new wood single light window and construct two new openings on either side with six over one double hung uh, wood windows construct three new openings with new two light wood casement windows on the west elevation install six velux skylights on the roof two construct 56 uh foot tall uh, inch tall stone <laughs> foot a uh, tall stone pillar uh, on the north uh, side of the driveway to the northeast property corner then to the northwest property corner and 115 feet along the rear property boundary fencing in the front yard will be screened with landscaping all work will be done in accordance with our attached drawings and plans all permits variances or approvals as required by law must be obtained before work may commence. Two, that the standards for carriage house, garage, and accessory structures found on pages 34 through 35, windows and doors on page 84 through 85, utilities and mechanical systems on pages 82 through 83, landscaping and trees on pages 40 through 41, and fences and walls on pages 36 to 37 of the Montford Historic Design uh, review standards adopted April 14, 2010 and amended December 9, 2019 were used to evaluate this request. Three, this application does uh, meet the design standards for the following reasons. Architectural features that are character defining elements of the accessory structure, including windows and doors are being retained and preserved. New and modified uh, window door and window opening are non-character window openings are non-character defining facades of the uh, accessory structure skylights will be located on sections of the roof that do not face the primary right of way new sections of metal fence d new sections of metal fence will be sited in a location that is compatible with the traditional historic relationship of fences and walls to historic properties in the district e New section of fence will match existing fence previously approved by the commission. F, stone pillars will match stone material on the primary structure and are compatible with the historic neighborhood and in, uh, in material and scale. Number four, that the action and improvements proposed in the application before us for a certificate of appropriateness are congruous with the special historic character of Montford Historic District. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Based upon we the. Will, oh. Do we need to vote? Okay. Yes. Um, and then we'll follow up with the second part of that. Uh, we'll vote by roll call. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon, you're on mute. Aye. 
Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bond. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. Uh, myself, aye as well. That motion based, carries. Based upon the foregoing findings and uh, for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a certificate of appropriateness be issued with the following conditions. Number one, wood, door, and skylight specifications will be submitted for staff review. Is there a second? Second, Vaughn. Okay. Uh, we will vote by roll call again. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins? Aye. Myself, I as well. That also carries. I think that moves us to the next item on the agenda. Mark and Jennifer, thanks so much for hanging in there with us. Thank you guys for everything. I think your job is really hard and uh, we really <laughs> appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. I'll follow up with you and Mark in the next few days. Okay. Bye. Thanks so much. Okay, the next item on our agenda is 119 Cumberland Avenue. Um, this is also in uh, Montford Historic District. Alex? Thank you, you Chair Kite. Um, also, old business for those who were not here back in um, June, I believe, was the last time we looked at this one. So I'll kind of we'll start totally from the beginning, but just to orient everyone to where we are. This property is located on the corner of um, Cumberland Avenue on the west side, and then um, on the adjacent side is West Chestnut Street. So the building actually faces West Chestnut Street, but it's addressed as Cumberland Avenue. <laughs> this is a street view image of kind of looking at the main entrance. It is a not contributing building that was built in the 1950s. Um, <clears throat> the the pr plans have changed quite a bit um, from the last iteration um, as far as the, the building itself with the site plan. Um, has really not changed very much with the exception of uh, if some of you who saw this before might recall there was a retaining wall, a concrete retaining wall being proposed uh, along the southern property boundary here along the, um, the parking area. They have now changed that to be um, a naturalized boulder wall. I didn't include the image, but um, there is a, a um, an image and the plans that kind of gives you an example of what this will look like. It will be interspersed with plantings and uh, not taller than nine feet. And I think it will definitely, while concrete walls are, you know, certainly allowed in the district, I think this will soften it a bit. Um, uh, the other difference with the site plan is they were previously proposing that the parking area be gravel and the new iteration will be uh, some type of paver. They haven't chosen the paver yet. So that will need to be, a condition when we get that far. Um, so the um, as you we focused most of our conversation last time around whether or not they could paint the building and whether or not the balconies were appropriate. So those were the, the two biggest sticking points last time. So based on your feedback, they went back to the drawing board and came back with an iteration that I think is um, is a lot more successful. They draw. They they drew their inspiration, as you probably saw from the packet, from um, some uh, buildings that were designed in uh, more mid-century contemporary style, um, <clears throat> using these kind of more blocky um, um, perpendicular elements that I really think are are care like actually blend well with the existing building really nicely. Um, the the balconies have been substantially lightened by just um, suspend, like having them be suspended on the back of the building. Um, 
So this, the top left is the back, just to orient those who are looking at this for the first time. Um, this, this, the image below is looking straight on as if you were standing in the parking lot. Um, and this one is just an eight, the top right is an angular um, view of that uh, looking north um, east. And then this is looking straight on from, from Cumberland. Um, I included, I didn't include that. These are just the um, kind of rendering drawings. There are obviously elevation drawings, so I can pull any of those up at any time during discussion. Um, you all just tell me what's helpful. I just wanted to kind of give some illustrate, illustrative um, renderings during our discussion that I, I feel like are, you know, most helpful. Um, so they do need to add a elevator and a stair, an elevator shaft and a stair tower to the top of the building. Um, so those will be, I think they'll be like minimally visible. They're pretty visible if you're looking at this, just because you're obviously looking at this as if you were in the air. Um, the roof deck has not changed from the last iteration, so it will be the same. And I didn't really hear any concerns from you guys the last go around on that. Um, but this is sort of what, if you're standing in the street um, towards the intersection, what you would, what it would look like from there. Um, <laughs> So I have not noted any um, concerns really, except for that I just wanted to reiterate that uh, I think it's important that we know how much granite curbing will be removed to um, for the new um, driveway entrance into the site. Um, there is an entrance there now, so it probably will be fairly minimal, but if there is um, any any section of granite removed, I think we need to make sure that that ends up in safekeeping so that it can either be reused here or reused in a different site. Um, and also just made a note that um, that if level one review re requires any modifications that we would look at um, those and I'm not sure. Uh, let Robin speak to this. Do you all have to go through level one now since it's only six units instead of 12? the change in use required or um i don't i don't i don't know um suzanne are you on here i don't know okay we can we can get to the bottom of that that's not that's not a big deal and um but i just wanted to make sure that if if when development services is re reviewing and if they require any changes um which would most likely just be for site that we would have an opportunity to look at those as well with um, other than that, I just have asked for um, some of the outstanding um, like manufacturer specs that we understand that they probably won't have for a little while now, but they're all things that we are standard for us to review at staff level. So no problem there. So I, we are recommending in favor of approval of the revised plans. Commissioners, any questions for Alex? Okay, I'm gonna uh, turn it over to the applicant to add any additional information. I think we missed um, Jay on the swearing in the first round. So um, Jay, if there's stuff that you'd like to um, talk about today, we can uh, swear you in really quickly before we get started on any kind of comments from y'all. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, Robin or anybody else on your team um, have anything to add to what Alex has reported so far? Um, I guess the only thing that I will highlight is that um, after the last meeting, we um, were trying to leave the original the brick portion of the building um, as close to the original as possible. So we're not painting it and um, we lightened up the balconies, but the CMU infill portion, which was added later, that is where we um, are are using um, we're using that area to um, modify the building some. So we are covering that CMU with stucco, and we are adding um, the entrance piece in that area because that piece is the least um, important to the building from our discussion last time. The way I saw it, so um, that really is the only thing I wanted to highlight. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? OK, 
Okay, we're going to pause for just a second and open the floor for public comment. Oh, uh, looks like we have somebody entering the queue. Okay. Bringing them in now. Hello, caller. Are you there? Caller, are you? Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi there. Can you state your name for me? Uh, Jamie Ashburn. Jamie, we got, um, before we get to your comments, uh, we need to swear you in. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to read the oath and then I'll ask you to affirm so we can hear you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the information you present during the hearing for a certificate of appropriateness uh, before the Historic Resources Commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do you? Yes. Okay. We're, um, you're free to continue. Okay. Well, thank you. I, 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 I spoke uh, last time a couple of months ago at the first presentation for this, and um, I just want to say that overall I'm super happy and excited about the project and, and are in support of it. I think it's way better than the last one, uh, simply that there are less, less units in the building. But um, I'm the guy that lives in the back, back side of the building um, where the majority of my house and backyard are kind of over or undershadowed by the largeness of the building. And um, it doesn't sound like my opinion or anything like that will have an impact on whether the decks are in the back of the building there, but they're, you know, about 30 feet towering over kind of my, my property area. And it's, it's not, you know, not desirable for me and I'd rather them not be there, but at the same time, it sounds like, um, you know, it doesn't really matter what my opinion is on that. Um, the main thing I'd like to say is, uh, is there's some giant green arborvitas planted along the property line of the back alleyway where those um, decks are. And I have contacted the buyer and he has assured me that uh, they won't be disturbed. And if they are disturbed, they'll, they'll be replanted with large ones. They're currently about probably 10 or 12 feet high. And my hope is that they'll, they'll kind of create a privacy hedge eventually for, for the, just the largeness and of the, the structure overlooking my property and the decks of the people that'll be in the back of them. So I guess my main kind of request from the, the, the buyer is uh, just to protect those arborvitas back there and, and let them grow into the, the privacy hedge. Um, but uh, I do, I do uh, like the, the less number of, of balconies back there that, that does make me pretty, pretty happy. So. That's, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there other callers? Madam Chair, there are no other callers. We will close the floor for public comment. Commissioners, uh, comments, questions? Are, is the last caller's uh, concerns addressed in this? And is that a, a requirement that we're making to preserve those? I was wondering that myself, James. I think the I'm looking through the revised drawing, and I don't know that I can't I can't zoom in close enough on this the site plan. Um, in terms of protecting those trees, it looks like maybe I can download and zoom in closer, but it looks like there's pr plenty of landscaping proposed along that 
side of the building and I presume without being able to see it clearly yet that they that those um yeah I'm not entirely clear where the arborvitae are that he's describing and I know Suzanne the landscape architect unfortunately had a time conflict with uh, we thought we might be done with the first item sooner but she had to leave so um obviously this is the this is the the on the right side is the is where we're talking about along the alley here um, and there is a substantial amount of landscaping there um do you have any idea robin where the arborvitae are that he was talking about I, I don't, but I know that the only thing we're proposing to remove from the site is that tree in the right. front. So um, if it's if it's all along the side, not on our property, then we're definitely not going to touch it. But um, I don't I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I would have assumed that you guys would show it as being removed on the site plan if that was if it were on that property. But um, it, may, it may just be like near the corner. Sorry, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I can add a little bit to it. We're, we can have the surveyor pick up the exact location, but do I think they are off the property in there? I think they're in the twenty foot of the un the un whatever the alley. Yeah. Um, but I I did you know, speak with Jamie and and I thought it I couldn't guarantee that they wouldn't get damaged, but I could guarantee that if they did, we could. Replace them. Uh, but we had we wouldn't in, intend on you know moving them or removing them. So Kevin, you think they're on the um, on the other side of your property line? It's potentially I mean, they're, they're like they're either just on or just off. They're they're really close to the line, and they could be just over the line in that alleyway. Mm -hmm. The previous surveyor did not pick those up because those aren't. They're evergreens. They're not necessarily, you know, sizable trees that they would have picked up in a survey. Right. And you've got some additional sort of larger trees planned for that area as well. Yes, and then you know, his concern is 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 privacy for the neighbors. Uh, always, that is a concern of ours too. We we want privacy for those units. So. We're going to make it nice. Yeah. Okay. Commissioners, other questions? I have a question. Okay. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, in the rendering that shows the um, elevator shaft as being white, is that right? Is it white? Yes, it's well. It's a, it's called drift mist. It's kind of um, like not this off white. One. It's 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 that color. Yeah, it's the color that's shown um, in that black and white image. That's from the paint. Example. So it's kind of like an off white gray stucco, which is different than the roof color or same. The roof, the roof is is dark gray. Yeah, right? the roof is like a dark charcoaly gray green. Um, from, from my perspective, I certainly appreciate the work that y'all have done um, in consideration of the comments from the last go around. I think this is um, a really successful solution. I, I think that you've um, come up with sort of an elegant way to navigate around the kind of ugly exposed CMU on the parking lot side of the building. I think that's, um, that is really the, the changes that you've made are really successful. I agree. I think it looks, it looks much better. It's an, it looks great. Thank you. Yeah. Any really questions excited. or concerns? Um, no, just to reiterate. Oh. I'm also really excited about the changes that were made. Um, and I, yeah, I think it looks great. I agree. I think it looks much better. Very attractive, a lot better.
commissioners, are we ready for a motion? I think yes, so. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Madam Chair, based upon the evidence presented to this commission, including Exhibit A, project description and photographs, three pages, Exhibit B, site plan, six pages, Exhibit C, demolition plans, four pages, Exhibit D, floor plans, elevation drawings and section drawings, 15 pages, Exhibit E, renderings, five pages. Exhibit F, uh, material specifications, 16 pages. Exhibit G, window specifications, 55 pages, received uh, 6821. Exhibit H, owner's affidavit, received June 9th, 2021. Exhibit I, photographs taken by staff, seven pages, June 7th. 2021 exhibit j pictometry pictometry what do we is that pictometry images two pages received june 9th 2021 exhibit k glass railing images received june 9th 2021 exhibit l revised drawings and plans 38 pages received <coughs> july 21st 2021 exhibit m review site revised site plans six pages received august 3rd 2021 exhibit n gis map exhibit and the commissioner's actual inspection and review of subject property by all members except i move that the follow uh, the this commission approve the certificate of appropriateness based on the following one that the application is to one, modify existing building, including replacement of all non-original vinyl one over one double hung windows with Colby black aluminum clad one over one double hung windows, replacement of existing flat roof covering over um, covering over front entry with new flat roof structure faced with painted stucco and supported by metal posts in black color and replace existing pair of front entry doors with single light aluminum storefront door with side lights. Remove two windows on the first floor of west elevation, lower grade and construct new pair of metal storefront doors with metal storefront windows on either side. Replace two windows on the upper floors of west elevation with new single light metal doors and construct double level stucco faced uh, balcony cantilevered over entry on first floor. Balcony will have metal support columns and railings and a TPO roof. Stucco existing section of CMU wall on west elevation. Replace six windows on east elevation with new single light metal doors and construct four suspended balconies with metal railings. Remove the deteriorated wood platform and stair from rear elevation, convert existing door openings on rear elevation to new window opening, um, construct new elevator and stair towers on roof, each with stucco smooth, oh, with smooth stucco siding, single light metal doors and standing seam metal roof in Sherman Williams greenback color. Resurface roof with TPO in white color and construct a 22 foot, one and a half inch by 25 foot, 6.5 inch uh, bison IPA tile deck on roof, surrounded by a three foot six tall horizontal black metal pipe railing and IPA planners uh, covered by a removable light colored fabric shade sail paint uh exterior of building with sherwin williams roycroft bronze sorry that's not right you eliminate that all I'll flip metal over from the last one okay all metal roofing will be sherwin williams green uh black color two site work uh remove existing signage remove existing concrete walkway 
and wall at the front entry and construct a new uh, 3.5 uh, inch wide concrete walkway. Three and a half foot or 3.5 inches? 3.5 feet. 3.5 yeah. feet. So 3.5 feet. Wide concrete walkway from sidewalk to front entry along uh, west elevation. Construct new concrete ramp and concrete stair with concrete cheek walls on west elevation to access new rectangular shaped concrete entry patio. Construct two stamped concrete patios and a uh, brick seat wall adjacent to the east elevation. Install new metal bike rack adjacent to west elevation. Remove existing fencing and construct a four foot tall wood trash enclosure area with gravel surface adjacent to the southwest uh, building corner. Install six new mechanical units uh, adjacent to rear elevation. Install four foot tall metal fence guardrail adjacent to the mechanical unit area. Remove existing electric pole. Construct a new uh, 14 space to be determined paver parking lot with one concrete handicap space in location of existing gravel lot adjacent to west elevation. Remove existing uh, section of sidewalk along West Chestnut Street to construct a new 24-foot wide concrete apron. Install one 12-foot tall Duke Mitchell light fixture at the southwest corner of a parking lot. Construct a tiered, naturalized rock wall adjacent to the south end of the parking lot. Remove three mature trees adjust, adjacent to West Chestnut Street that have outgrown their original space or are in poor health. Install new landscaping throughout the site. All work will be in accordance with attached drawings and plans. All work will be in accordance with attached drawings and plans. All permits, variances, and approvals as required by law must be attained before work may commence. That this number two, now that, uh, that the standards for non-contributing structures founded on page uh, 68 through 69, fences and walls, page 36, 37, landscaping and trees on pages 40, 41, lighting on pages 42, 43, sidewalks, streets, and public infrastructure on pages 46, 47, walkways, driveways, and off-street parking on pages 50 to 51, and painting on pages 70, painting on pages 70. You can 70, leave that one out. In, um, all in the Montford Historic uh, design review standards adopted April 14, 2010 and amended December 9, 2019 were used to evaluate this request. Number three, this application does meet the design standards for the following reasons. A, every effort has been made to maintain the architecture integrity of non-contributing structure. B, uh, alterations to the structure are compatible with the size, scale, and color, material, and character of the neighborhood the building and its environment. C, granite curbing is being retained and preserved. D, new sidewalk and walkways will be concrete and consistent with the existing materials. Uh, new parking lot will be in the same location as existing, will be constructed of pavers, and concrete will be screened with landscaping. F, new retaining wall will be constructed of stone and screened with landscaping. G, new light features, uh, fixtures will be compatible with the building and the district. H, mechanical units will be located as inconspicuously as possible and will be screened. Number four, that the action and improvements proposed in the application before us for a certificate of appropriateness are congruous with the special historic character of the Montford Historic District. I second. Okay, we'll vote by roll call. Uh, Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. 
Uh, me, I as well. That motion carries. Based upon the foregoing findings and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a certificate of appropriateness be issued with the following conditions. One, all manufacturer specifications, including doors, roofing, lighting, mechanical unit, patio material, and paver material will be submitted to staff uh, review for staff review and approval. Second, Vaughn. Okay, we will vote by roll call again. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliver. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. Uh, myself, aye as well. That motion also carries. I think that brings us to the next item on the agenda. Robin and the rest of the group, thank you so much for your application. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. I'll be in touch with you guys. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the next you, item on the agenda is uh, 288 Montford Avenue. This is new business installation of a new fabric awning over the front porch and I will turn it to Alex. Thank you, Chair Kite. I'm gonna make this one really short and sweet. Uh, it's a very straightforward request. Uh, this is the same bed and breakfast where we were looking at the, um, the fence actually earlier. And for whatever reason, the name of it is escaping my brain. But in any case, it's on the corner of Watauga and Montford Avenue. Um, it has this um, lovely little porch up on the second story that is partially uncovered by the roof. This is something I'm, we've come across in Montford before. Um, so there's water um, intrusion happening and, um, and so a, a good bit of damage has already occurred. So um, this is the image on the left is just showing you where the, the awning is proposed. Um, it's a pretty small, it's only 10 and a half feet by three and a half feet and it will be black fabric in accordance with the standards. Um, on the right, there are just a couple of other um, examples. Awnings were, um, were found um, throughout the district and the one on the top right, in fact, was one that we, the commission approved um, in my time here. So similar circumstances where water was coming into the balcony and causing substantial um, damage to the building, which is obviously not something we want. So um, it, I think it will not be highly visible based on the color that they're proposing. Um, and I have no concerns noted, but thank you, Shannon, Black Walnut. Um, so if, in any case, I'm happy to um, answer any questions if anyone has any. Uh, questions for Alex? Doesn't look like there's any. Um, Alicia, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think Alex did a very good job. Thank you. Okay. Um, commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Okay, we'll take a quick pause for uh, and open the floor for public comment. Madam Chair, there are no callers in the queue. Okay, we will close the floor for public comments. Commissioners, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion unless there's anybody wants to make a comment. Madam Chair, based on the evidence presented to this commission, including exhibit A, application, project description, and photographs, um six pages exhibit uh, and the commission's actual inspection and review of the subject property by all members except i move that this commission approve the certificate of appropriateness based on the following appropriateness based on the following. one that the application is to install a 10 and a half by three and a half foot black fabric awning supported by extruding aluminum tubing over an open balcony on the front elevation 
All work will be in accordance with the attached drawings and plans. All permits, variances, or approvals as required by law must be obtained before work may commence. Two, that the standards uh, for awnings and shutters found on pages 56 and 57 of the Montford Historic District Design Review Standards adopted April 10, 2010 and amended December 9, 2019 were used to evaluate this request. This application does meet the design standards for the following reasons. A, awnings will be constructed of canvas. B, awning color will be compatible with the house. C, awning is appropriate for the architectural style of the house. Four, the actions and improvements proposed in the application before us for a certificate of appropriateness are congruous with the special historic character of the Montford Historic District. Uh, is there a second? Second Vaughn. Okay, we'll vote by roll call. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. Myself, I as well. That motion Based. carries. Based on the foregoing findings and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a certificate of appropriateness be issued without exceptions. Second Vaughn. And a roll call vote. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. Myself, I as well. Okay, and that concludes the application at 288 Montford. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Alicia. I'll check in with you in the next couple of days. Thanks, Alex. Y'all have a good night. You too. Okay. The next item on our agenda is 95 Cherry Street, also in Montford. Thank you, Chair Kite. Um, I'm, I'm going to run through this one really quickly also because it's fairly straightforward. And then I was going to, I was wondering if you all might want to take a quick break before we move to the last item because that one might take us a few minutes to get through. That sounds good, Alex. Okay. Oh, not sure where that's coming from. Am I echoing? No. Oh, that was me. okay. Okay. <laughs> I did the wrong um, thing. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So, um, this application is for the frugal framer building on Cherry Street. Um, I just added a couple of Google Street View images. Um, this application is obviously a non-contributing structure to the district. It was built in the 1980s. Um, it's a little bit funky in that when it was constructed, the, they created the um, the floor height and this um, of the interior and this are, are not exactly the same of the wooden platform on the exterior. So initially, when I talked with Jane Mark Matthews, the architect who um, worked on this, and Shane Elliott from her office is here with us today in case you all have any questions. But um, initially what Jane and I talked about was um, lowering this so that they were the same height, but what they, um, or sorry, raising it, I believe, saying it the opposite way. But in any case, what they've decided to do um, instead is just to add um, some small um, metal ramps so that it's the, floor access is a little bit easier and there it's not currently ADA compliant so um, there'll be a ramp at each one of those front entry doors um, to access the interior space um, and then they're also proposing to add handrails um, on either side of the ramp that's on the front of the building and um, the other part of the application is the the two doors and the windows are not in great shape. So they're just proposing to replace those with new wood doors and windows. So very simple application and I'm not noting any concerns on this one either. 
the railing on either side of the of the ramp will be just a one and a half inch diameter painted metal pipe rail, which is pretty standard for what um, the commission has allowed in the past when there isn't a rail present. <laughs> Commissioners, any questions for Alex? Okay. Is there anything else that you'd like to um, let the commission know? Um, I think Alex took care of it. Okay. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Okay. Or uh, Pause for a second to open the floor for public comment. Uh, Madam Chair, there are no speakers in the queue. Okay, we will close the floor for public comment. Commissioners, any other comments or discussion? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Madam Chair, based upon the evidence presented to this commission, including Exhibit A, application, project description, photographs, plans, and product specifications, 11 pages, Exhibit B, Google Street View image, and the commission's actual inspection and review of subject property by all members except, I move that this commission approve the certificate of appropriateness based on the following. One, that the application is to replace existing front entry doors and side lights with new wood single light uh, doors and windows. Install two new 34 inch by nine and a half inch transitions extruded aluminum entry ramps at the at entry doors to accommodate floor height difference between existing wood entry decking and interior floor. Install one and a half inch diameter painted metal pipe railing on either side of existing ramp adjacent to sidewalk. All work will be done in accordance with attached drawings and plans. All permits, variances, and approvals as required by law must be obtained before work may commence. Two, that the standards for non contributing structures found on pages 68 and 69 and uh, accessibility and life safety modifications on page 54. 55 on of the uh, Montfort Historic District Design Review Standards adopted April 14, 2010 and amended December 9, 2019 were used to evaluate this request. This application does meet the design standards for the following reasons. A. Every effort's been made to, made to maintain the architectural integrity of the structure. B. Alterations to the building will be compatible with the size, scale, color, material, and character of the neighborhood, the building, and its environment. C. New ramps will not compromise the original design of the entrance. Four. Four. That the uh, actions and improvements proposed in the application before us for a certificate of appropriateness are congruous with the special historic character of the Montford Historic District. We have a second. Second. Okay. We will vote vote by roll call. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. Uh, myself, I as well. Go ahead, Will. Based on the foregoing findings and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a certificate of appropriateness be issued out conditions. Okay, is there a second? A second. Okay, we'll vote again by roll call. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. 
Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. Myself, aye as well, and that motion carries. Okay, that wraps up the application for 95 Cherry Street. We've got one more item that we talked about, uh, take a quick break at this point. Um, it's, we've been at it for about two, almost three hours. Um, it is 6.40 right now. Is 6.45 enough time for everybody? Um, does that feel good? Alex, good for you? Yep, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Well, we'll see you all back here in five minutes. Thank you. This is when kids are about to see the band festival in the um, yeah. Thanks. I guess I have to be right here because I'm close to it. Do we get any rain at all? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Um, not a lot. <coughs> but, um, there was a and out of a severe thunderstorm, but we just got a lot of thunder. Some wind, you must have caught the edge of it. Is there any Gouda in this too? No, just uh, no. Swiss.
like maybe we're waiting for Alex. We got everybody else. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. So we got everybody back. I don't always see everybody. Here we go. Uh, looks like it. Um, we've got several folks to swear in, Alex, maybe before we get started. Um, beginning of the meeting, we're missing a few folks from the uh, applicants list. Um, maybe we need to do before we get started with your report. Um, who all do we have here? I, on my list says Emily, Lexi, Ralph, and Colin. Yeah, uh, I didn't see Col Ralph's on. I didn't see Colin on the list, though, unless he's one of the Don't ones with the phone number. I don't think Colin's going to make it. It's birthday today, and he wasn't uh, sure to make it. Okay. And, Ralph, we got you sworn in on the first round, but I think Emily and Lexi are, we just need to get you sworn in. Correct. Okay, so I'm going to read the oath, and then I'll ask each of you by name to affirm, okay? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the information you present during the hearing for a certificate of appropriateness before the Historic Resources Commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, Emily? I do. Uh, Lexi? I do. Okay. I think then we're ready to proceed, Alex, with your report. All right, thank you, Chair Kite. Um, <clears throat> this application is for uh, construction of a new 3,500 square foot primary structure on Elizabeth Place. So I've included GIS map just to um, help you get oriented to where we are. Um, this is the front of the lot here. Um, fronting on Elizabeth Place, and then Broadway is here. Um, so it's roughly in the middle of this block. Um, <laughs> it's pretty typical for new construction projects to take more than one hearing. So um, I have quite a bit of notes in my staff report for you all. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, these are the perspective renderings um, of the structure. Um, I've noted in my staff report, I did give some feedback to the um, design team when we first met to look at it, um, and they did take some of my comments and make some revisions, but I still have concerns about, um, in particular, um, the the house, I think, is trying to read as a, as a craftsman-style house, a bungalow from the front elevation, which is top right, um, but I think that the dormers are really distracting from the whole overall form of the building. I tried to look at other examples of bungalows and it is very common to have this kind of double um, double front facing gable, which was one of the pieces of feedback I gave them. They made that change um, before they submitted their plans. But I, the, um, the dormers I have not seen, I've seen dormers on um, bungalow style houses, but they're more like there's one I, I keep thinking of that you all just approved on um, on Pearson, where it's a uh, um, where the uh, it's got like a shed a, sh a side facing gable, so it has a, a shed dormer on the front. I don't know if you all recall that one, um, but there was a similar one um, next door that um, that you all had approved to. I mean, not this particular group of people, but the commission some years ago. Um, so I, I'm struggling with how this reads from the street as far as the dormers go. Um, I think there are, I not only do I have I not seen dormers really at all on like kind of in this, in, configured this way on a bungalow style, um, as far as my research, I, I feel like these are really very large for this, for the front elevation of this house. Um, I did also note that I have some concerns about um, the fenestration in particular. I think that the um, the left elevation, which is your top left, 
I feel like that needs some additional openings. And I feel like all the windows being kind of that scrunched up small size and um, there, it's just kind of odd to have windows of all that tiny size on one elevation. Um, there aren't very many windows. I think the regular placement of them in that dormer, if, even if you all are okay with the dormer at all, I think they're a little bit odd um, as far as how they're spaced um, and their and their dimension. Because typically in a craftsman style was mir mirrored a lot of the features that were in a prairie style. So like the windows were oftentimes very elongated. Um, a lot of times in a craftsman style, not super elongated like you would see in a in a prairie style, but um, but definitely not not small like that. Um, so noted that, and then on the um, the bottom left is the other side elevation where they've got that little tiny dormer, which I I have not seen that um, in my years with looking at um, historic architecture. Not that it doesn't exist somewhere. I just haven't seen that. And in particular, I think it is just kind of getting to be a lot with all the dormers. And plus that little circular window is a little bit odd. Um, uh, the other thing that is not, I think, I believe according to my communication with the architect, that the they are showing two separate roofing materials, which I told them was not, um, not something that the commission had approved in the past. Um, but they said that's, I think that's supposed to be corrected and it's supposed to be all metal, which in my then feedback to them about that was that it should be probably asphalt shingle would be the more consistent um, roofing type for this style. If this is the style they're going to go with this kind of craftsman bungalow. Um, the plans also note a metal railing on the front and rear elevation porches, which I have never seen in my time in looking at this type of historic building either. Um, so I think that those need to be changed to be wood. Um, I, I sort of feel like too, there's a little bit of Jekyll and Hyde happening with the front elevation and the rear. Um, you know, the rear massing of the rear is so large and not that, you know, certainly buildings, especially with the grade changing as it does on the site, you know, there's going to be more than one story. It's almost like, I think, because it's like a double story balcony or porch, it just kind of like feels very heavy on the back of this house um, for a, a smaller bungalow style. Um, <clears throat> so I think those were all my um, parts about the building. I also noted that um, that there is, and I want to, I want to make sure you all understand too. Um, let me move into the next couple of slides. Here's the color rendering from the street. Um, I wanted to make sure that you all were clear that this accessory structure in the back is just shown as a placeholder that is not included in the current CA request. So just, um, it's labeled as future. So just bear that in mind as you're reviewing this also. Um, I did note that they really need to work on their landscaping plan. It's very um, lacking. So that that's um, all of this information has been shared with them. There were also some um, inconsistencies between the new construction worksheet and their actual plans that I asked to be corrected. Um, <laughs> and also some additional material specifications as we do with, um, with a new construction project. Oftentimes they haven't gotten that far. So we understand that, but I just wanted to point out that I've listed all of the things that we still need um, in the staff report as well. And at this point, I'm really, my recommend, recommendation is that you, it's kind of like giving preliminary feedback. I feel like, um, at least in my opinion, this one needs some, some more tweaking to to get to a place where um, where it's more final product. I'm happy to answer questions if you all have any. Alex, just a minor clarification. The site plan that you are showing looks like it, there's gable dormers on the side, but it, I, there's a more updated site plan or not that shows the correct dormers there. Yeah, I believe I might have pulled the wrong one, but yeah, the first iteration that we looked at 
uh, did have the two different types of dormers, but based on my feedback, they revised it to only have one, okay. the one shed, the shed style dormers on either side. Yeah, and I think all the revised elevations reflect the shed condition instead of the dormer. Right. <laughs> or the gables, I mean. Alex, what did you think about the uh, what the parking? Um, what is staffs to follow the uh, standards for parking not in the front or side yard if it's available? And I guess there's a plan for it to be available. There's an existing the driveway on the site that they're going to reuse. But should the parking, the final resting place, be on the side of the house versus further back? Will will that driveway extend, or is this just? Uh, it looks like I would guess done. so. If they're going to try to do a garage there, although it was pointed that out park, earlier, that driveway goes all the way. To the, the existing concrete drive goes all the way to the back. Like that whole kind of gray, it is the full length all the way to the back already. I think what he's asking is if it's going to continue into the rear yard. Because we would consider consider this to be the side yard, but I I think I don't think it's an issue. Will or Commissioner Hornaday, excuse me, to to in to terminate the 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 um, driveway here, and they can park along the side. Um, there would be a gravel lot back there, yes, at this point, at the bottom area. Okay, then gravel and pavers on the there. side plan. Okay, yeah, that was an item we had not discussed as to if it would be paver, you know, permeable pavers or gravel or probably permeable pavers, truthfully, of the sorts down there. We'll get that on the next one. Commissioners, are there other questions from Alex? Okay, um, Emily or Ralph, is there any additional things that you'd like for the here before we open up? Uh, yes, so I just wanted to touch on a couple of the subjects that Alex already had. On the left elevation, we actually, it's purposely left with not a lot of fenestrations just due to the proximity of the neighbor and the fact that it's stairs over there and you're only six feet off of your property line so there's there's no view there's there's no anything over there um as to larger windows and the the cadence of them across the dormer um that's definitely something that could easily be adjusted putting windows in the stairs but we have a double staircase along that wall so um you know for the floor plan considerations. Uh, the other item is that double stacked deck is the same on the neighbor to the left and the right. So that was actually while we were standing on the lot, we're looking to the left and the right. And that's, um, you know, it's like, we want decks that look just like these, you know, these two to the left and the right of us. Um, so that's, that is where that came from. The the little dormer, and I thought it had gotten on there when we submitted it, we actually did find that small little dormer on some other windows and we took pictures. Um, we'll make sure to get, I don't know that we gave you the address of where we found that, so we might need to go find it again and get that back to you. Um, and then yes, it, we had metal on both of them. It just didn't, we got it in the color rendering, but we didn't catch that it, the we have the example image, Emily. I just didn't add that into my slideshow. I can I can pull it up really quick. Just give me a second. And I'm sorry, I don't have where it was located within. Montford. That was not. So you forgot about it. Uh, 
um, while she's pulling that up there. So yeah, we had, uh, and it's also got the two different types of dormers we discovered, you know, it, where you've got the little shed and the, um, the gable. gable. Yeah. The peekaboo, I called it a peekaboo gable, basically. Um, I know I've seen them because that's the whole reason I knew about them because I always thought they were really cute and intriguing to me. So they've caught my eye before. Hence me knowing they existed. And um, yeah, that's where that idea came from. It's to get light into a middle bathroom upstairs. We were trying to not make the house super tall, hence having the dormers with the space upstairs. You know, we were trying to actually keep a smaller presence. Um, you know, the way to shrink the dormers would be to make that roof taller and get like a two-story like the neighbors on the side where it's more like a true two-story, then it's not really necessarily a craftsman at that point. Um, I don't know, so it kind of goes back and forth with the, you know, not having a huge presence on Elizabeth Street, you know, the smaller side with the dormers, or just making it a much taller structure and not having the gables as, as pronounced. Commissioners, y'all have questions for the applicant? Okay. I have a question for you. On the front elevation, that small window to the left of the front door doesn't seem like, when you look around at the neighboring houses, all the windows in the front are Either there's a stained glass or a decorative window that's not full size, uh, but not a uh, small one. I, I can't tell in the floor plan if there's a a, a, a need for that. Um, but it it looks off to me that size of window on the front elevation. Which which one? The Did small ones up? on the front elevation. To the left of the door. Um, I guess our definition of small is different because that's like a four by. I mean, that's you know, it's the, three and a half yeah. feet tall by four foot wide. Yeah, the double, uh, double hung window. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just looking at the standards where it says that the windows should follow the patterns of the nearby houses and all the there. There's decorative windows that are sometimes uh, uh, shorter than the full length windows like on the right. Um, so I was just wondering, is there a reason, is there something behind there that- uh, Oh yeah, it's an office and they wanted to, it's a small office and they wanted to be able to put a desk and space up underneath. So we have the sill raised up so that the, because the office is only like six by eight and so they wanted to be able to have the wall space for shelvings and a desk underneath the space. I wonder if it would look maybe a little bit more, I don't know, that I, I do agree that it's, it's, I think it's funky because that, because of the, it, like the one on the right is kind of obscured by the column in front of it. If you maybe you did a single window there, um, that were maybe the same size as the other ones or or shorter i don't you know um yeah it's, okay or a casement um like i can see that some examples for sure where there's like single light casements like taking kind of the size that you have of the the small windows on the size side and making that a casement window um that might work mm -hmm. Yeah, that window's mostly for light to have a little bit of a view, but up high, so it can definitely be adjusted. You know, it's not needed for egress or anything like that. So it's, that's easy to adjust. And I think the other, where Alex was, uh, 
the guide, the standards say that there, unless there's uh, a metal roof that was there previously, um, that's when a metal roof standing seam can go back. Um, otherwise, uh, ash, asphalt uh, shingle. Uh, okay. Just to be clear that that's pretty specific. Yeah, we, we missed that line. We just saw that metal was approved. Er, yeah, we saw I the saw picture metal. of the metal. <laughs> I just knew it was like specific types of metal roofs. That was what I had read. Apologies. Well, I think it, sorry, I just wanted to add that I think in, in, I see what you're saying, Will. I think that is for existing structures. So in this case, you all basically would be just making a determination of whether or not you think metal is an appropriate material for the style of architecture that they're proposing. So um, I've seen a couple that have metal roofs that were bungalows, but they were they were installed without a CA. So I haven't seen any. It's it's kind of unusual for people to come to us to um, to to get approval to replace an asphalt shingle roof with a metal roof because. Once they learn that it has to go to the commission, they usually decide to just go the path of least resistance. But um, so I'm not saying that there aren't craftsman style houses out there with metal roofs. I think I've seen it more on like a four square um, houses like that style versus the style though. So I I have some concerns about the the dormers as well. Um, are there other homes in the area that are arts and crafts or craftsmen that have dormers that large that aren't facing the front so they like we would probably need to go and drive around for a minute because everything that i was trying to see from the road like as i'm driving around is obscured by trees so yeah. it's kind of hard to tell um so and without going into their without going yards. into the <laughs> private area <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell so we'll try to walk a little closer and see if we can get better pictures yeah i think even if you google arts and yeah. crafts or craftsman homes front view with dormers you know i think most of them that i've seen have are facing the front and they're quite a bit smaller so that you just see the triangles when you look at the house mm -hmm. like that one's small facing front yeah this one i was going to say is an example of a newer house where you're kind of going after similar goals i think from the front elevation and i mean this may change your whole thing i'm not saying you, you should go this route but i agree with commissioner oliva that this is sort of more typical of a dormer on a craftsman style where yeah. it's, it's unfortunately very difficult to do the roof in that manner just because it's such a shotgun lot so if we did a gable this way the, the peak would be kind of absurd <laughs> it would get quite tall um because the the building's so long but it's definitely something we can look at um different options on how to do that uh I also like the Google flyover to look at roofs. It works quite well. This is a good example of the brackets too, where there's just three of them instead of on yours, there's an extra one in the long uh, that I think dives, I guess some of them dive into the, uh, the porch gable. Yes, they're not that just Pardon me? They're a bit back behind it. We would probably need to adjust the sizes of those. And that, I mean, that with the brackets as is was based off of, because we went and looked at a bunch of pictures of the double gable. So that was very much based off of not necessarily Monford Crossman, but this double gable with the brackets. So that was very much based off of some images of Crossman we looked at. Mm -hmm. with the, I think in the, the nearby uh, neighbors and Monford, I didn't see any that had that middle run, um, using my cursor, uh, bracket <laughs> in the upper right um, picture, uh, that, mid, would, that middle row. Yeah, again, small decorative element. Yeah, we're not yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I think that the, the double gables on the front elevation look great. It's just the dormers. Uh -huh. I mean, even I mean, if maybe they didn't come all the way out to the edge of the roof, they they might be okay. We Yeah, we'll have to do some monkeying with stuff because that's our egress window. So if I don't come all the way out to the front, I don't get my uh, available egress window size uh, for because those are two bedrooms up there. So that is... Uh, yeah, we'll have to, to look at some of that. We can make them narrower. I just, I can't make them much shorter because of the window for the, the egress. You're, so they have to go to the edge of the roof? Right, because otherwise the roof would come in front and I wouldn't get the sill height to get my my height needed for that window. How about a third gable that faces the front? That's not where the bedrooms are. A third gable. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, the, it's lifting it up so you keep. I I I, I'm, I don't I don't want to make you crazy. Well, and that's what I was saying. We could raise that main roof and then get some stuff in. We were trying to kind of keep the the elevation on Elizabeth smaller so it didn't. You know, it's just become this super giant because then also on the the Broadway size, it gets really tall because that's you know the lot slopes off. So we were trying to you know keep it lower, but then yes, to be able to use that space, you end up needing the dormers to be the size they are. The shed roofs um, keep me from being able. The shed roofs over the deck keep me from being able to get the uh, egress windows in on the the front and back cables. Well, I mean, I think there's some some reconciliation that will eventually take place between what's happening on the inside and what's uh, in response to some of the feedback that you're getting on the exterior. And, um, and I think the feedback that we are, uh, that some of the things that we've landed on, certainly the image, Alex, that you showed with the sort of front facing gable, um, kind of bungalow style, which sort of turn reorients the kind of massing of this of this house, kind of ninety degrees to that. But um, you know, I think it certainly I can appreciate the challenges that you are facing with regards to egress windows and the configuration of the floor plan and the various um, programmatic um, layout of the of the plans in relation to the exterior that. You Posing, um, and I think that's really one of the bigger challenges with new construction in a historic district is making the right decisions on the exterior that can be sensitive and congruous with the neighborhood, and also finding the, the elegant solution on the inside with the floor planning and the programming. Um, so that's obviously a back and forth that happens. Mm -hmm. um, we some point need to pause for public comment, which <laughs> we, we've sort of launched into um, feedback, which I think is fine, and we can um, continue that. I think it's important, and obviously, um, sort of the point of today is to, to provide you with that feedback on your um, on the solution that you've come up with. Uh, but I would like to just do a little bit of housekeeping and pause for public comment if there is any. Uh, I'm conversation. I've got um, one question, if I could. Um, sure. our dorm um, if I could, if I could just let's. Uh, there are no callers in the queue for public comment, so maybe we can dispense with that piece and move yep. on with the deliberation. All right, we will close for public comment, and Ralph, I'll uh, turn the floor to you for your question. Uh, are dormers in general the way they are located uh, problematic? or if they were set back some, um, would they be more acceptable? Um, or do we need to find more examples in the neighborhood that have uh, um, dormers uh, like we have them there? Because like the example the lady showed of the, um, I don't know which commissioner it was, that showed uh, um, the house on the, uh, the right of that across the street had a dormer on the side, um, a smaller dormer, 
Um, so, you know, I was just wondering, you know, dormers in general, are they going to be allowed? Ralph, I, from my perspective, and I'll ask other commissioners to weigh in, um, I think it is about the um, consistency of the style of the house that you're representing. And so when we look to a, craft, a craftsman style house or a bungalow style or a prairie style, what are those um, consistent elements? in that particular style of house. Um, and that would be, I think, looking for precedent that we could, that could um, help the commission visualize those, those design decisions that you would like to make in a particular style. Um, and so the precedent research I think is important. And I think um, it's, there's, there's nothing in the standards that say you can't have dormers, but the standards talk about sort of style consistency um, and looking to the, the style examples that are present in the neighborhood and certainly having um, the, the right integrity of that style sort of carried through out the proposed design that you're, that you are um, asking for review. And approval. Other commissioners on that question? I mean, there's a uh, craftsman houses have dormers. The, the, it's just the integrity of having the, the gables face the front of the house. If the dormers, I know we just talked about this, were not at the, to the edge of the roof or were just smaller. But, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I haven't seen any other examples, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. In the neighborhood, there may be some. I just don't know them. I think just to reiterate, like I, I've spent a fair amount of time in my review of this just to make sure that I was giving my best feedback to you guys and the commission on this. I spent a fair amount of time looking in Google Street View and I, like Commissioner Oliva just said, there may be examples. My search has not been exhaustive, but I've spent some time in Street View in Montford and the only ones that I can see that have um, like larger gables at least are, um, or gables at all, are usually the ones that have the front facing um, shed gable. Um, the, the double front facing gable ones, I haven't come across any that have um, dormers, but that's Alex, but I think you muted accidentally. Sorry. I would <laughs> encourage you to do your due diligence and do some more research if you, you know, want to continue with the dormer concept and see what you can come up with that might support that. Because I haven't seen anything, but again, I don't want to, I wouldn't, would not want to like, you know, rule anything out without having more, more examples to kind of under, better understand. <laughs> Commissioners, what other feedback? I wanted to echo Alex's uh, north facing elevation on the upper left that the uh, a mixture of windows um, is pretty common, whether it's a, up against the house or not, just to, to have um, something visually to break up the, uh, the that one single size of um, smaller window. I would agree with that. I think uh, I'm obviously moving forward, paying attention to some of the material selections, um, you know, roof materials, the railings, Alex mentioned in the front. Um, those I feel like are easy um, things in terms of consistency um, with properties in the neighborhood. So 
Um, I don't know, Alex, that I share your strong opinions on the porches in the back. I don't know what other commissioners think about those porches. Um, I know there's some language in the standards about sort of pulling the corners of porches back. It might be just for additions to um, to existing structures. Uh, um, it's just for decks. Yeah. Not porches. So I think they're good in that way. I was trying to pull up the recent uh, new construction project you all approved on Pearson as an example, because I think that's a pretty good one as far as um, what you were describing, Emily, about the kind of, you know, issue with the grade in terms of how big it has to be on the back by nature of that, um, because this one was sort of similar. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. And if the standard is look like the neighbors, as we said on the front with the windows, wouldn't this just apply in the back when the, the applicant pointed out that to the left and right, they have basically the same, you know, double porch thing going on? I think it's just saying generally that building features should be similar to other historic buildings. But I, I the other, the houses on either side of this are also two story, four square houses. So they're not a story and a half facing the street. So it's a little different to me. They're not the same style of house, but. Um. I don't um, think I have any issue with the two porches in the back either. I think that um, we, I mean, it's in the back. So, and the neighbors, it's gonna be similar. So in that regard, I'm fine with the two porches. This was the house that was approved at um, 103 Pearson Drive recently. Um, and as you can kind of see from the side elevation, it's fairly long as well. It doesn't have the double porch because um, it doesn't have one on the bottom. It just has a patio, but similar. Um, but with the back is um, the back is broken up by this rear facing um, dormer that matches the front. So it's yeah, that I can tell just now they have a much uh, we still we have the back lower level is almost four feet off of the grade down there. I got gotcha. you. It, it, it's we you it's about a 14 foot drop from the front to the back. And so without doing a basement that, you know, was ridiculous, you know, either. We kind of split the difference by putting the deck in and not having, you know, 14 and a half foot basement front retaining wall. So we brought the basement up a little bit and put in a wood deck to account for just the how much of a difference we have in elevation there. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm 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 kind of trying to use this one as an example to like be in support of the the porch idea on the back i'm just saying you know just using this one as an example of the mm -hmm. dormer on the front that maybe is i don't know i mean the commission approved it so uh the on the rendering that you're showing the bottom one which the front elevation on this house that was approved alex can you bring that back up oh this is the front I, i'm sorry the next one down can you bring so i'm fine with the back porch i like in this rendering that the supports on the porch are the same size which i think on the proposed house they're smaller on the top is that correct well yes because we had the heavier craftsman columns on the bottom so we didn't want to go heavy craftsman up to little then heavy craftsman up to it look you know if you've got the the big base it looked awkward having the real wide base again once the craftsman got narrow at the top like the what staff if you, craftsman what if, columns did not look correct at all no i got that but what the width of the top on the the top of the column on the first level Matched. yeah the 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 i just think because they just look little i i just think it would balance 
because craftsmen's kind of have sometimes have stocky, stocky columns. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and I almost wonder if the back, the columns on those rear porches aren't really craftsmen. If that's a, um, if they were both straight columns on both floors, I, there's a, a sort of a weight and a massing to it that feels too heavy. If, if they were as thick on the top, is that what you mean? Or if they were consistent and not the tapered craftsman columns on the bottom floor. Oh, okay. I got it. Um, I don't know. That's one of those things where I think you almost have to see it yeah. both ways. Decide if it's better or if it's solving a problem that really isn't a problem. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You draw it four or five ways and decide from there. But um, um, yeah, Chair Pye, it's, it sounds like um, Commissioner Oliva needs to leave and I, because of I, our really formal process, I think, do we, Janice, do we have to have a motion can they just vote to ex excuse her or well we, we still done? have a well we still have a quorum to to vote even yes. to continue yes we'll yes. be fine with that yes you just want to formally uh recuse her so that it's the record shows that she's no longer present at the meeting so if somebody wants to make that motion to um, let her leave the meeting okay so moved Vaughn. Second. Anyone? I'll second. Uh, okay. Thank uh, you. We'll vote by roll call. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Oliva. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Watkins? Aye. Uh, myself, aye as well. Commissioner Oliva, you are excused for the thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next month. Okay. I think in general, from my perspective, the feedback that I would offer is, you know, I think echoes what other commissioners have said with regards to um, the, the dormers and just some co styled continuity, I think, throughout the, um, the massing and the, the roof lines, for sure. Um, I think the windows, that's an easy hurdle to overcome with some additional study with regards to uh, especially on the left elevation, having more variety um, there on that side. Um, I think that it, you know, from my um, perspective, it feels like some response on the inside of, of the house might be necessary to try to overcome some of the challenges that the massing is giving you for, um, you know, evolving the design into the next kind of steps for a follow-up meeting. Um, you know, I appreciate the scale of the building from the front street elevation on Elizabeth Place. It feels like it fits well in terms of how it's positioned on the site and how it relates to the, the houses adjacent to it. Um, it is, you know, a long, skinny site. I think the back has probably limited exposure for, to the public. There's, uh, I think, a commercial property right up on Broadway that um, is would it be in front of the back of this house and certainly the height difference there would give you some visibility from um, Broadway but I don't know that I'd ever really consider it a front elevation in any way. It's the new townhomes you can't see it at all. Okay. Yeah so you can't uh, see it. it's the backs that were the okay. those new townhomes that are getting built are the brownstones the brownstones or whatever so that there's yeah you can't see any you won't be able to really see that much because those are so tall. Well, so in the middle of the block. 
yeah, I don't have a real scale problem or issue with how tall it is in the back or that the, you know, the basement level is, um, you know, above grade there, the way those Porsches are, um, are proposed. I think with some nuance on the style and the language of the exterior, that the back is probably, um, not a real concern from my perspective. Um, you know, certainly color and material selections on the, um, the siding and the shakes, I think are, um, you know, can be informed by the style decisions that you make with regards to the massing and, and the roof. What other comments? Or certainly um, the applicant, if you've got questions of us that would give you some better clarity or direction um, as you continue to develop the project, we're happy to talk about those things as well. Uh, Ralph, do you have any concerns other than what we'll need to discuss? Because I'm fairly clear on the, and have some ideas on how to address the dormers not needed to be discussed here as I hit the drawing boards again, but everything else has been pretty clear. Uh, just one question, the roof, uh, metal roofs are out or not? Alex, what was the, what were the standards that you were referencing that, that, um, were a concern to you with regards to choosing metal? That was a sort of style congruity question. Well, yeah, I think it's easier if you think about it, like let's say we were looking at an existing craftsman style house, which typically, or a bungalow, probably would have had an asphalt shingle roof and not a metal roof, right? So the guidelines really are kind of written more with, the, with that in mind that you're that we're talking about, you know, historic structures and whether or not it would be appropriate to go back with metal. And they, they're pretty specific and say that um, you can only go back with metal if there's evidence, clear evidence that it was metal originally. And so, um, and so for new construction, I guess I kind of look at it just in basing it on like what's typical of an architectural style that's being proposed. And that metal I don't think would be typical of a bungalow style house, but you all, again, that's sort of like another thing where it's like the, the dormers, if there's evidence to the contrary, then certainly that can be used to support your argument for a metal roof. But um, I don't, can't think of any examples that I have seen except for the one or two that I know were put on without a CA. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Sure. Other questions or comments? On, on either from the applicant or commissioners? To, um, as a commission, the, uh, the small, I know things are gonna get reoriented, but just to sort of help them along. I like the little window, but if it's, an anomaly for a round window is that sort of the feeling or is it more of a uh just the anomaly of a the uh, third gable uh break in the roof line does that make sense yes, uh, well are you are you asking the applicant or the commissioners <laughs> i'm asking the commissioners um <laughs> uh, just to help them, help them along because I see what they're doing, but you know, sometimes that pops around a chimney flue or something, but uh, what, what, what do other commissioners just think, just to help them along? I think for me, the, the round is a little bit, I think we would struggle to find precedent for that. Um, you know, I understand the sort of element of, you know, whimsy or surprise in the things that we design. And there certainly would be evidence of that in Montford where someone got kind of excited about doing something a little different. Um, you know, I, it's, for, 
yeah, you know, I think it's just one of those things where you you look at it and decide if it's um, if it is it effective the the way that it's done. Does it do the thing that you wanted it to do in terms of creating that sort of surprising moment or um, in a in a way that's still consistent. Um, and I think right now the, the round feels like a real inter- interruption in, in it, maybe more so than the little dormer does to start with for me. So quiet. Uh, I think the options sort of... Um, at this point, when you feel you have reached the sort of feedback that you are looking for, um, the natural course of things would be to ask for a continuance, um, to allow yourself some time to digest the feedback of the commission and to make some modifications in response to that, um, and then to come back to the commission with some revised um Okay, so yes, we would like to ask for a continuance at this time to address the the feedback and concerns that you the commissioners have brought up. Okay. So just to chime in here, the resubmittal deadline is next week. Do you think you can pull that off or do you want to continue to October? <laughs> uh, how when do I need to let you know? <laughs> um, well, Wednesday is the submittal deadline. So um, if you want to, you can request to continue to September today if you're not sure, if you want to try to give that a shot, or and you can let me know um, in between now and then if you don't think it's going to work and you need to um, request to continue to October, we can do it that way too. Let me get back to you tomorrow. Can I get back to you tomorrow when yeah. I have time to speak with my client and see where we sit? Um, yes, and then we'll... You can just continue to September today, and then we'll just see where you land. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay. So we need a motion. So moved, Vaughn. Second. Hornaday. Second. Okay. We will vote by roll call to continue the Elizabeth Place to the September meeting. Commissioner Hornaday. Aye. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Falcon. Aye. Commissioner Vaughn. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Watkins. Aye. And me, I as well. And then you um, can follow up Alex, I guess, um, and firm that up later in the week. Yeah, Emily, y'all just be in touch with me as soon as you can to let me know what your plan is. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Thank you, guys. Thank you, much. Thank All you, right, Ralph. Thank you. <laughs> Alex, do we have other business today? We don't. I'd like to make a motion to uh, to end the August meeting at 7.40 p.m. You have some nice, dramatic motion reading tonight, Will. I try, <laughs> I try to put my best out to every time, 100%. It did not go unnoticed, just to put that out there. <laughs> And I think we can all second by hanging up, yeah? So we'll see you all next month. We had one quick meeting in person, and now we're back to this. Yeah. See we'll you. See all, next all right. Bye, everybody. Bye.